will just hit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just playing. Welcome back to the Garnish Podcast. <laughs> I can't even call it a podcast anymore because you know why? I did a little Google research. Apparently, there's already a Garnish Podcast, and it's all about cooking. <laughs> really? Yeah, that makes yeah. sense, huh? It does, but it's also fucked up because I definitely did a Google search right before finding or er, you know cementing this name for this show. And I was like, oh, cool, I'm valid. Like, it makes sense. Boom, made all the titles, did the episodes. It literally wasn't until, like, the first time we tried to record this that I saw that for some reason. I found it on Spotify. The official garnish. This is the no. official garnish. Yeah, this is the official garnish. They didn't contact you or anything, right? No. They're like, hey, Tom, we take our food podcast very seriously. See, my... Uh I think my approach to it is going to be to just outdo them. Yeah. So that I look the, like the one that's more legit and they'll, you know. Just put garnishes my, on the couch. Then my team will be like, why the fuck is this kitchen like stealing his name or whatever, his podcast? Yeah, cease and desist. Exactly. Get out of here. I want to get to the level where I can give cease and desist. You want to give cease and desist? Yep. I hope I never give or get one ever. I mean... I guess, no, I've never gotten like a legal cease and desist from anybody. I got one one time. Really? For what? Me and David Nelson's uh, girlfriend one time, a couple of years ago, we, I had this fried idea because I think I like, I might've even seen something similar to it on Instagram. And it basically the idea was to make these like bootleg t-shirts mm-hmm. and call it sus. Like, oh, that shirt looks sus. So, like, the brand's name was Sus. Sus uh, NYC or Sus Brooklyn. Anyways, I decided to do... Okay, you know how, like, like a Chinese bootleg will be, like, I don't know, four stripes going down the leg for, like, a fake just, Adidas? Just slightly off. Yeah, like, something's but fucked like up. very noticeable. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, my idea was going to be... Um, Two album covers, so two different t-shirts, two album covers, one Beyonce, one Rihanna, but the photo of Beyonce would say Rihanna across it, and vice versa, so the the Rihanna album cover would say Beyonce on it. Okay. And I think it was, like, I, Dime, Montreal, they make jokes like that all the time, like, they'll do... Yeah, like, misinformed humor. Yeah, it would be like Salman Aga, but they'll say it's John Cardiel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was kind of playing off that, and then we sold some. And I know for a fact that one of the people that bought it was, I think, Zachary Quinto, right? The actor? I'm not sure. I'll check that later. But I think it was Zachary Quinto from uh, American Horror Story, okay. from one of the seasons. Yeah. Somehow, <laughs> somehow Christina like knew this chick who worked for PBR, and she got us... She got us... Um, access to essentially sell the t-shirts at the entrance so like people were buying tickets and then we had a, a little table set up with our experience. t-shirts and they could yeah because it was like a beyonce versus rihanna night remember like djs used to do that like yeah. jay-z versus nas whatever and uh yes yeah, so we sold a bunch of t-shirts almost sold out that night zachary quinto and his boyfriend were one of the two people that bought them and then like a month later this is back when i was still living with nelson and his girlfriend and we get a letter, I think it was addressed to Christina, or somehow they found us, but it was a fucking cease and desist being like, you can't legally be selling these t-shirts anymore. It was probably like the name sake too, and not even like... Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's like those names are trademarked so hard. Absolutely. Uh, but like the right... Because that dude bought it, someone saw it, some publicist or someone... Someone saw it and like, yeah, that's crazy. But I was hyped on that because, I mean, shit. If I still had it a got brand, an arm's reach to one of them, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like it. I was, I felt like I was popping for. But like the thing is, you know, that's what's like crazy about all of it is like the actual people probably wouldn't care. Of course, it's like. No, but they're like, yeah, I don't know. They're bigger than just them. They're at. Yeah. Well, they're There's like an entity and they're, they're like a they're, brand. The, yeah. That, that, you said it for me. Can't affect the brand. <sighs> Got to protect it. 
Dude, my head, I'm like, my head's going to explode. Like every time I like start thinking about stuff like that, like, dude, it's pretty, yeah, it's so wild. Maybe quarantine's good for people for a while. <laughs> like, why is that? I don't know. Like, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. No, it's just like, I think it's just good to like have to think about, I don't know. There's like a lot of people have been home very much just like, I mean, people are doing their thing and like doing social media is being used like very much as social media right now. Like very big means for work, for entertainment, for mental escape, for everything. But I think it's I think people are being forced, I guess, to like be home and, you know, think about stuff and like hopefully do something constructive. Like, I don't know, like if you haven't read a book in a long time, like you might have read a book in the last two months or so. You know what I mean? Like. Mm -hmm. It, maybe it's good to like slow down a little bit. I mean, th the circumstances are heinous, but I don't know. People can, there's like a good take from, from it somehow. I don't know. Like people get so concerned like with social media and stuff about like, no, like you get a thousand followers and you're like, I'm a brand now. Like, you know what oh, I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's good to be like kind of forced to just be like home in your like, house. Look like, at alone. yourself. Like, yeah. Like, like be uh, introspective what's the brand really about <laughs> like you know what i mean like yeah inside yeah. no i know what you mean i don't know like i'm not i'm not being i'm not having like i'm just putting it on the table like as like i'm not even like really getting at my point i don't even know what my point is i'm just like i don't know there's like an introspective a forced introspective part of what's happening what's happened and will continue to be happening yeah and i think i think there's something positive about like scary sometimes like the introspective side of being kind of low-key it's good have you gone through any freak outs yet it's been two months now i was Dude, actually just thinking about I that have, today i have freak outs like internal freak outs when things are perfect <laughs> like i'm not like a super like jittery anxious person all the time and like i definitely can like be in a room with whoever and be cool, be fine. Not, I'm not cool, but like be, you know, like relaxed. It's yeah, not yeah. like it doesn't permeate out of me, but like, I definitely like have, I get hung up thinking about stuff all the time. Like, yeah, there's an existential existentially, I guess. Yeah. I've definitely had a couple freak outs. Um, it's weird. I don't know. Everything's, I don't know. I think the, the the best thing that you can do for yourself, no matter who you are, if you're not like working in a hospital or doing essential work, like if you're of the people that are even working from home, like quarantined or have been like at home mostly, like I think that it's like important to realize that it's, it's not just you. Like, don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's so much bigger than any of us. So, like, it's easier said than done, but I think a lot of, like, little stress is, like, oh, like, I, I wanted to be doing this. Look what I was doing, like, this time last year. That was last year. Things are different right now. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think, like, I don't know. There's a lot going on. And, like, I think it's good to just have, like, an open heart about what, every different person's dealing with through this. There's like, obviously there's someone that's got it worse than everybody. You know what I mean? Like always, there's always going to be someone that's worse off and someone that's better off. But right now I feel like everybody is just kind of like in this weird space. And there's like some people that like have had to be very much at risk and like around stuff. And I don't know, I think it's just important to like, I don't know. Keep it in perspective when you're stuck at home. You're like, I can't believe I'm still stuck at home. It's like, oh, there's people like, think about like the people that like are working in the hospitals and stuff. Like, just stay cool. I don't know. I just, I try to like calm myself down by like, just be like, yo, dude, like, there's, you got it all right compared to a lot of people. Like, I don't know. And like, yeah, I don't know. Nice rambled. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, I don't know, I'm probably the worst person to talk about. 
<laughs> that sort of stuff or like I have no advice for you know what I mean like how anyone should be doing during it but I've been just like with my girlfriend like the whole time and um we're it's brought us a lot closer <laughs> you know what I mean like that's good though like yeah. it's really good to hear because I, I didn't think it was possible but like <laughs> yeah yeah no that's good because my perception was that and I mean a million people have mentioned this too um that a lot of people are probably going to be single after this yeah it's like just forced yeah cohabitation like a lot of people exist it's not good it's not bad it's just like a social construct I guess but like uh, a lot of people exist like where they don't see each other like a couple doesn't see each other like a good eight hours out of the day unless you like work together and live together but that takes special chemistry I think <laughs> probably to, to pull off in like a really graceful way but um, yeah I think a lot of people exist not seeing each other all day every day and night and day and night and day and night and that's like a very confronting thing like I don't know yeah it's I know I mean I've like read a ton of sad stuff saying that like yeah a lot of like domestic violence has been oh, dude I'm not gonna talk about statistics it's just like that shouldn't like that I, that shit makes me sad to think about always but like yeah to your point like a lot of people are gonna be single after this mm -hmm. and I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. Like it's already tough enough what's going on to deal with it in any capacity. And like that, on, I don't know. Yeah. I just hope everybody's still friends at least after. Yeah. Well, no, but I, I was only bringing it up, not even at like a, a super serious tip, but if anything, I've joked through about how I low key kind of look forward to some of the, the, the newly single females that are out there just like, I'm fucking free. Like quarantine's over, bitch. Like summer's here. Fuck it. Yeah. I'm partying. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> but free love. Let me also uh, put it on, say it on record that I'm not just saying that out of selfishness. I'm just saying it <laughs> kind of to like the point I thought you were about to make, which is that it takes a certain type of chemistry and love to be cohabitate with a person, especially like if it's a new relationship or if it's a person that you weren't a hundred percent sure that you could even be with. And now you're kind of forced into it. And I think that a situation like this, like this quarantine is really shedding light on what should last and what shouldn't. And unfortunately for a lot of people, the truth is something that's hard to face, but unfortunately like they don't have an option here. And it's like, kind of like what you were saying, it just is what it is. This is a situation that unfortunately you can't really control. And it's like, also, even if people are bummed out about like going through a breakup like that because the relationship had a weak foundation in the first place, it's like, yo, like you, you should be happy. It's like, you don't have to fucking survive through like more bullshit in the future. Like if it wasn't meant to be, then that's that. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like in a Bronx tale. It's like, well, you, you lost the guy for twenty dollars, like you don't have to deal with him ever. Yeah, it's like, look, you it could have been a three year relationship, but now it was, you know, six months, four months before quarantine, and then during quarantine, and then you're like, All right, I'm fucking done. It's kinda like an expedited version of like, should I stay with this person or not? Maybe not. All right, cool, moving on. It's like yeah, you're forced to reckon with Yeah, like longevity and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, I know it's probably a fucked up and, like, a, a brutal kind of way too honest and direct way to think about it, but... I mean, well, the, 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 overlying, the overlying thing is that everyone deals with stress differently. Mm -hmm. um, so, I think that is a main factor in it, and, like... I don't know. Sometimes there's like weird, there's weird, there's weird chemistries with human beings in general. Like everyone catches different, you know, vibrations with each other different. You know what I mean? Like everybody, everyone deals with energy and obviously stress is a heavy energy, like deals with stress 
differently. And sometimes when someone freaks out, the other person gets very calm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And that's like, that's when that's ideal. Cause then, you know, that's, that's a good balance. That's, you know, kind yin of and yang. Yin, yin yeah. and yang. Yeah. Even if they don't, even if the two people don't share the same viewpoint or even if it, the whole thing started in an argument that they're, you know, sometimes there's like one person going, going off makes the other person like strangely calm. And then sometimes it can be like gasoline and a match, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like some people like push each other. I don't know. There's like, and some people prefer, I don't know. Some people are, I don't know. It's, it's weird. Like, some people thrive off of stress too. Right. Some people that do well with it. And like, there's definitely couples that, that do. And there's definitely people that do like, I, I do the best work. Like I do the best work and, uh, feel like I ration my time the best when I'm slammed. Like when I have a lot going on, if I'm on a crazy schedule, somehow I do I think I feel like I put like the perfect amount of attention into everything. Like if I'm like working a job or two jobs <laughs> and still like maintaining like personal relationships, finding time to like do special th- like skateboard and stuff and then still find time to like do all of my stuff even if it's just like one night a week or part of a night I feel like I do like my, I make my best creative work too. Like, which doesn't fully make sense, I guess. Like I remember when I, when I first like left all my jobs and started just kind of doing, working on my own thing and taking commissions more and stuff like that. I feel like the first time I had like a couple days of like nothing between projects, I like started having like panic attacks and stuff. It was just like, yeah, this isn't sustainable, man. Yeah. Like, what do you, you know what I yeah. mean? And like, it's which is weird because, like, I don't know. I didn't like, I didn't go to college and didn't like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's weird. Like, I feel I don't know. I feel like I should be okay with just going with the flow, or like, there's different parts of my life that have always just gone with the flow and not been very planned out and not been very like on a schedule. And that's like, it feels like necessity, but then like somehow of like there's certain parts of my brain that work very well in a schedule with like very tightly rationed time slots and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. It's, it's weird. I'm kind of just going off again too. (laughs) Um, some, I, I feel like that I, I thrive off of not stress, but like, a sense of urgency or something mm-hmm. like that. Sometimes I feel like I can enjoy my free time more when I'm on like put myself and like this schedule doesn't have to be like mandated or like given to me by, by anybody. Like I can just make it myself. I just have to like, I need to like do something like that. I think to like really enjoy all of my time and um, except for if I'm just like, I mean, if I you know work for a million days and then just like, I'm going to take a day off. I don't want to plan anything. Like <laughs> I know I might want a cup of coffee and I want to eat something different than what I usually do. You know, <laughs> like mm-hmm. and just like try to be outside or something. Yeah. Or point the mic a little bit towards you. Sorry. You can you can tilt just the front, like there you go. A little there. more down. There you go. There you go. All right. So. Um Yeah, no, I totally feel you. Uh what you were saying about feeling like you're about to have a panic attack when when you have a day off, I get that because I feel like when you are working, it's almost like you're, especially if you're disciplined as is, disciplined and have a strong work ethic. When you have a day off, it's almost you feel like you earned it. But I get also when you, you get stuck in a rhythm, like sometimes the only way to work 10 days in, in a row, 12 days in a row is to get into a rhythm and kind of tune out and go on autopilot and just be doing shit. So then when you actually do have to think, you're like, wait, what the fuck? Like, it's almost like you just snap out of it, wake up. Right, right. So I get that, yeah. Take, make a rhythm out of monotony. Kind of like, you kind of just, everything's systematic. 
Right. Which almost like sometimes that could be bad though, because it kind of puts you into like a, a complacent and comfortable position, especially mentally. Yeah. And then it's not very, not only it's not very creative, but it's, that also is not sustainable. I feel because no. what if something shifts? You gotta, like, you change everything. What you need changes sometimes. And like, I don't know. I feel different, different days. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like not like, to an extreme, but like, you just got to check in. You got to, you got to, no matter what you got going on, you got to like check in with yourself. Yeah. yeah. You got to just be like, guys, what everything I'm doing and like working for me is everything I'm doing, serving like the purpose of what I want to accomplish. And like the person that I ideally would like to be, am I being good to my people? Am I being good to, you know what I mean? Like all those things, I think, but like, all those considerations need to be taken, but like you have to above all just like be like, am I happy? And is everything I'm doing like serving the greater purpose, which is like, I mean, not like, Oh, the only thing that matters is if I'm happy. Like, I don't mean like that. It's like, it's important to like find happiness in what you're doing though, at least like, but like every, you have to do stuff that you don't like. So everybody does. That's, Mm -hmm. that's life. Right. That's responsibility. That's, I'm not even going to necessarily say growing up because like kids don't like doing chores, but it makes them a better person after, you know what I mean? Like you need that. I don't know. I, I feel like it can, if you, if you're lucky enough to have like a, a job or something with a lot of freedom, like just realize that you're lucky because I don't know, like I even feel crazy for being like, yeah, I you know when like things are going well and like I have like a, a day where I don't have anything scheduled. I have panic attacks. It's like, Oh, woe is me. Like it's, you know what I mean? Like you gotta like be like, yo, I am, I am grateful that I can sustain and like an independently operating day to day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, but you, can't be, is you can't be so hard on yourself. Cause I don't, I don't think that's a complaint. I think there's just like a, in my opinion, that to me shows that like you just have a strong work ethic and you're used to working or you're used to like yeah. productivity and kind of like what you just said, like, is, I feel like especially the, the older I get, at least the more I think about that every day of like going through uh, an introspective list, almost like, all right, what am I doing today? How is that helping me as a person? How is it helping my career? Am I going to be able to eat like two or three healthy meals today? Or am I like, again, for like the fifth day in a row? you know, having like a fucking snack or something for, for dinner. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? Cause that's not sustainable. Dude. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I last year, like the year before I was so bad with it. Like, it's like, if I think about like a couple years ago, when I was still kind of working, uh, more of a structured balance of things. Like when I was working like at the print shop and when I was working at the, like the gallery and doing my own thing, I felt like I was like eating super good. It was like exercising like crazy and I just had like a perfect balance of things. But then like you know, working for myself, I'm like, it's way hard. Like I'll just get into a, a vibe working, get into like a rhythm. And then once I find like the perfect rhythm, I'm like, oh, I'm good right now. And then I'll just work and work on something for like five or six hours and then realize that I just like missed like two meals almost, you know? And then I'm like completely not thinking. I'm withering. I'm like, yo, I feel terrible. But like I just got into this rhythm and like that's the that's the thing that I think is like tough when you if you're doing something. Like you got to like – that's like a, a micro version of that is like, you got to check in with yourself. Be like, I, I have to be hungry right now. Yes, I am hungry. All right. Bookmark what I'm doing and come back to it. Like it's easy for me. It's it historically has been easy for me to steamroll and just keep mm-hmm. working. And like, it's not like what I'm doing. I'm not saving lives. You know what I mean? Like I should be saving my own life and going and like eating a meal right now because I'm hungry, like painting something there or like I can pause dying this stuff. It's not going to like spoil like, right, you know, right. like it's just hard. It's hard sometimes. Like you gotta like check in with yourself. Like that's like that's something I'm taking away from like go what's going on right now in the world is like I'm checking, not like trying to be trying not to be like 
self-absorbed and not like selfish, but like you got to check in with yourself. <laughs> like even if then that can go the other way too. It's like, I'm way less active than I, you know, generally am running around like this, like I'm usually like, walk or skate like 10 miles a day living here, you know? And lately it's like two and I'm eating all those meals. So it's like checking in with yourself is also like, dude, do you need to, do you need to like make another, you know, sandwich or yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like I said, I, I literally, I thought it was going to pass out cause I was so hungry. Like when I came to set this up before yeah. you got here, I was like, fuck, like I'm about to chicken crash. salad in the smoothie set you straight though. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, dude, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't take much. So, I'm like, uh, did you ever come over to Tony in my studio? It's, like, over by, it was over by Anchored In, or, like, where lab, New Labor is. No, never. So, we had the studio f- for, like, we got it last June, and we're just moving out right now, so we had it for, like, a year. But, um, yeah, it was, like, ridiculous when we didn't eat there, like, because there's so many good spots right there, too. Like, Newtown, that falafel spot. Shout out Newtown. Um, they're closed right now, I think, but, like, I, when, when everything is all, when the smoke clears, go to Newtown. It's, like, a little blow up the spot. <laughs> Banging falafel Newtown. Spot. Yeah. Um, damn, everyone that works at labor is, like, so bummed. I know. I just said that. <laughs> like the, I just blew up the, the falafel spot. Oh, but not this case. <laughs> oh, dude, they're, I, that's what I was saying. I go, oh, we were moving out of the studio yesterday. Anchored in's right there too. Closed right now. Newtown, closed. Labor, dude, they're in there getting like orders ready and stuff. They're, yeah, labor, that, uh, they're killing it. Like they're, they, that is an example of a business like for the people. James is a saint. He works super hard. Both those shops are like, you know what I mean? Like they're, we're gonna, they're gonna keep that shit going, man. Yeah. Hell yeah, yo. But they're not. They're. I mean, they got to be taken. Like all skate shops, all businesses, all retail stores are getting smacked right now. I don't know. I heard the opposite. I heard that. Uh, I heard that skate shops are actually doing really skate, good. Yeah, because they're doing online. Oh yeah, true. they're doing and curbside pickup and online orders and like, dude. Yeah, I was just gonna say like, skate shops. Dude, yeah, they are going to make it. <laughs> yeah, because they have a community, like, people like us that are just like, nah, like, I'll, fuck it. I will pay extra money for whatever I need to pay for just, like, so that you can stay around. I've bought way more skate gear in the last, like, two months than I have. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. just even, like, t-shirts and stuff. Just, like, okay. Yeah, hell yeah. Exactly. Yeah, dude, like. No, but what a fucking shit uh, timeline for them to open the new shop. It was like literally two months after they opened the doors to a shop. I know. In like a still, not a desolate part of Brooklyn, but, you know, it's not that much foot traffic. It's no Canal Street. There's no foot traffic. It's a destination, but yeah, it's like right off the train. There's like, and there's some, like there's all those band practice spaces and stuff over there too. Like that area is always jamming. Is it? The coffee. Yeah, it's weird. To see, it's sad. Like, man, I wish everyone was like, no one was getting hurt you know, business wise from this shit. Uh, I just wish the best for like everything, even shit I don't visually like or like agree with. I just want the best for ideally want the best for everybody on right. this planet. Well, like, because also, especially those businesses though, too, it's like they affect way more than just the business itself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't even want like some of the Starbucks around here to close because that's going to fuck up a lot of people's jobs yeah. that, you know, that might be their first job or maybe they've been working at Starbucks for years. They're like a, a shift manager, but they're also trying to go to college because Starbucks pays for tuition. And all. You know what I'm saying? Like, Starbucks offers m- so many like perks for their employees. I feel like yeah. just like from hearing from people like, yeah, but I was just saying like people that get laid off from there probably at least, I don't know. Like, I feel like they have to take care of their be, have the means to, they, I don't know if they are or not. I yeah. don't know. Dude, I don't know what's going on. Like, yeah. I haven't had a W two from somewhere in so long. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, I don't know. It's, yeah, man. I just feel for everybody. Like, businesses. 
down for me too. Like for me, like, I don't know. I just like, I had an existential thing. I was talking to Tony, Tony Tafura about this yesterday. Like we both like when like this stuff was happening, just like had like a feeling of like, just, you know, for a second, just like, I got to just chill for a little, like for a minute. Like, no, nah, I don't know. It's just like, it's just something so heavy about what was happening. It was just like, I, I just didn't make anything that I want, like with the intent of selling anything for a little while when this first went out. It was just like, I don't know. It felt, I don't know. It was like some weird thing. It was like, I didn't want to capitalize on, cause it was like everyone's stuck at home now. Everyone's like, you know, not getting to go to work. It's like, this is how technically how I operate every day anyway. Mm-hmm. The rhythm wasn't too much different as far as like, how often I'm like working in the same place, but there was just like, I don't know. And then like everyone, you know, started making like masks and selling them. And I just was just like, I can't do that either. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, if people like people need them and stuff like that, but like, I'm not, I'm not making like medical grade masks. And if I'm not making them like that, then like, I'm not going to sell them. So I don't know. I just don't feel like I've, yeah, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm like, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Well, is it like you just don't want to take people's money or you think that it's... um, I, I don't know. It's just me. Per- like, I don't know. It's like, I don't I haven't like... Like the principle of it? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, which is... But like, I don't... But do I look down on anyone that's making masks right now and selling them? No. I like... Dude, I have one like right here. Like, someone... Yeah, like I bought... Oops. <laughs> Like I bought, I bought a mask, you know, I bought like a couple of these, like someone made them and like, I, it's, I don't know. I just didn't feel like that was like, I wasn't going to shift gears and like, I don't know. I'm not like saying that with pride. It's just like, I just didn't know. I've just, I don't know. Existentially, it's just like a crazy thing. Right. And if anything, I just wanted to like put, just, I don't know. It was like nice to just like stop making clothes for a little bit and just like draw stuff and paint and mm-hmm. um yeah is that what you've been doing up in western mass how was that you were up there for a minute i was up there for, we were up there for a minute yeah um here point the mic a little towards you again yeah we went up and stayed with my brother for a minute um in western mass uh shout out to my brother <laughs> for letting us, ronnie and i come up there uh it was good um my nephew and niece and sister-in-law, my brother. Um, it's like right around like where I grew up, like hill towns, mm-hmm. like Western Mass. Um, and it was nice. Like their their whole life dynamic, you know. Every it's seeing how everyone's you know affected with it differently. Like I'm so not around kids. Like living in New York, like some of my friends have kids. I, you know, I'm totally like, I love seeing them. I love, you know, it's like, I'm not like weird around kids, but day to day, I don't really see, interact with kids. So going up there and like being in the house with them for that, you know, a few weeks while they're like acclimating to, uh, learn at home, like homeschool. Um, and just, you know, like working from home and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. It's like, it's a, it's a dynamic. And like, I took it as like a, I felt grateful, obviously that, you know, to spend time with my nephew and niece and like Ronnie was homeschooled growing up. So she knows the, she knows the, how to get the flow going Mm -hmm. pretty good. So that was like good. It was just like, it was nice to be able to like slow things down and be with them and help them kind of like, you know, rationalize through, not being able to go to school and hang out with their friends and stuff like that, like be a little bit of a cushion for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I don't know, man, I, you're from, you're from there too. It's, I don't know. There's something magical about it. Like, yeah, I love going home for a minute. Like I wish, I don't wish, I mean, like it was pretty far out there, but we grew up in like this log cabin in Granville and I, w- I you know, like it's be so cool if, my folks still lived there. It'd be great to go like sleep there in like the cabin. Like growing up, I always thought it was like 
No, I definitely wasn't like proud of it. I was just like, like living, I didn't like talk about it. Like, like I live in a log cabin, but like now as like an adult, I'm like, that's so sick. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I'd love to go stay in that, in that house right now. But yeah, yeah my, my dad lives in a way more populated zone now. He's, he's older, like he's living out in the woods. It's like, I don't know, mm-hmm. not, not the vibe anymore. Yeah. Uh, but now I, like I, I grew up in the woods and like, it's weird how much I appreciate it now versus like when I was like a teenager. Yeah. But I mean, first off, when we're teenagers, we're so fucking pumped up on testosterone and just like everything being new. Like, yeah. Yeah. Titties yeah. are everywhere. <laughs> yeah. All you want to do is skate. Yeah. And you know better than your parents. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like you're being sure. introduced to like weed and drinking and whatever the fuck else. Like, just a lot, getting of, into lot shit. of a lot of angst. Yeah, so much teen angst. Yeah. So it's like, of course, you just want to break out, but particularly through because of skating, I feel like at least for me, I always felt like I belonged here, like in a city, but particularly here. Yeah. And I mean, you know, that's essentially my reasoning why I did move here years later. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, also, I was born in a city, and I immigrated to Amherst when I was six. Right. Yeah. So it's like, I always felt like I was out of place and, you know, granted, I imagine Amherst is probably bigger than Granville. Yeah. Uh, not size wise, but it's more Pop. settled. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Granville. Yeah. There's like a country store and a library. They closed the school cause there weren't enough kids. <laughs> like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. It's small, but like it's comparable though. Like it's like one of the towns around there. Yeah. Like a, a shoots barrier, a leveret. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Like, but same, dude, same, same vibe though. Mm-hmm. Amherst is just a little bit more like alive or something like that. Yeah. Like, well, it's more alive because the colleges, particularly the UMass. colleges. There's a magic though in Amherst though. There's like, there's some, there's some good, good shit in the air up there. there. Is. Like if you think about like the amount of like, there's so much artistic, like radness that's come out of <laughs> like Western yeah. Mass just in general, like. On different, on different tips. One um, time over, over Christmas break, I went up there for like a week to visit my parents. And I, um, I was trying to f- essentially flex this one girl that I kind of started kicking it with a little. And I was like, yo, you want to see something cool? This is Emily Dickinson's house. And uh, I was like sending her <laughs> Emily Dickinson's yeah. house. And then, cause I was just like having a casual stroll around, around downtown. Yeah. And then I went to the the town graveyard and I passed by Emily Dickinson's uh, gravestone and like all her family, a little shit like that. But, um, that I guess kind of ties into the flex, point you're making. Flexing lit. Lit what? Like flexing like literate, like literature. Stuff. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Just exactly. Flexing lit, just like throwing some like. Dude, you know about 19th century. <laughs> yeah, man. That's great. That's yeah. so sick. Yeah. That's rad. Yeah, if people like, if I'm like, oh, where where are you from? Are you from Boston? I'm like, no, no, it's like the other side of the yeah. state, Western Mass. Like, shout out to Boston, but Western Mass is so much different. <laughs> like, yeah, to- totally different world. There's like, yeah, I'm trying to think of like some of the like landmarks. I'm gonna like body myself by even trying to do this, but there's like the the Basketball Hall of Fame is like one that like people will be like, oh okay cool like yeah more neat like volleyball was invented in Holyoke too. I it's think, so crazy. I think that's, that's like, I think that's accurate. Yeah, yeah, it was. All right, cool. Oh, uh, it was like, but like that just left my lips and it sounded right. But like, I'm like, I don't know. Um, yeah, I was actually born, I was born in Holyoke. Um, but the, yeah, uh, Dr. Seuss. Eric Carl. Eric hey. Carl has a museum at, uh, Hampshire college. Okay. Booyah. Um, yeah. dinosaur junior, Sonic yep. youth. Uh, yeah, we could. I could probably pull out. We could probably fork out a couple more. But Smith College. There's yeah, also Smith that lady. College. I don't know if you watched that Netflix uh, documentary. How to, uh, what the fuck was it called? Like how to orchestrate a drug scandal. I didn't watch it. Peep that. But I know that it's about like, uh, it has to do with West. Some the uh, the ladies from Western Mass or something, right? Yep. Uh, sort of. She like she moved to Western Mass. She started working for the DA's office. But so she was like a drug tester for the district attorney Mm -hmm. and 
essentially her duties were like, okay, say a person gets caught with like an ounce of cocaine, they get arrested, but obviously, you know, under U.S. Constitution, innocent until proven guilty, even though obviously it's vice versa, but whatever, whole another black hole there. Um, and what her job is, is to essentially take those drugs, the, you know, alleged drugs, test them, make sure that they are actually drugs so that when the person goes to see the judge in court, then, you know, the judge actually has something on them. Like, yes, it's been declared by a lab scientist official that that is drugs. That is drugs. Yeah, like that that was coke. (laughs) You had coke on you. And essentially this woman, this lab worker, she uh, she was just very much like an introvert. That's how she grew up. That's how she was even like her young adult years. And she started using the drugs. Mm -hmm. And then one time they, because, you know, her department was super underfunded. um, Like the conditions just fucking suck there. And once again, she was an introvert, like normally working strictly by herself. No uh, supervision. One time they found a fucking crack pipe in like one of the drawers under her table. So now they had to open up a case for like, I don't know, like 10,000 cases of people that got arrested on drug charges drug offenses and it turned out that a lot of them they had to throw out because technically they uh they've ruled that she was under the influence of drugs herself Certain while performing these texts exactly yeah so like it couldn't hold up legally speaking that's loaded yeah that's uh yeah. Dude, that's heavy it's super and she, does it take place in what it takes place there Moral Science Center. You, I imagine you probably have no clue where that is in Amherst or in UMass because that was like, it wasn't really a skate spot. That's not, I know, like, yeah, it wasn't the hub or the Fine Arts Center. But it was right next to the Fine Arts Center. It was okay. like where the pond is at the Fine Arts Center. Yeah. It was like essentially on top of that main roadway. And there was a science building. We used to skate these like two little ledges. There was, uh, remember that dude, Nate Jackson, of course. Of course. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Nate Jackson, at one point, he ollied from one ledge over the sidewalk down to the lower ledge and then fucking caught wheel bite and fell off that lower ledge into the street onto his back. I don't know if you remember this clip, but it was at Moral Science Center. I can't think offhand, but that dude's so gnarly. Yeah, (laughs) That dude's so gnarly. Shout out to Nate. Yeah. That dude taught me how to do nose manuals. I remember I was like a, I was like a, essentially like a sim at like MSC in like Western Ma- in Westfield. Um, I don't even do, I don't know how old I was. I was young. It's probably, I was probably wearing, 2002. Yeah, I was wearing a helmet for sure. And probably excels. I wonder if I ever saw you there. Cause I think I, at one point I saw, um, that dude, Haytor. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Big legend. Yeah. Hey, Tor Cuevas. Yo, maybe actually, I think we might have gone through this before, like 10 years ago at some party. I feel like you and I and like maybe even Kato talked about like, oh, yeah, I think we saw each other. Burke something. Burke at MSC. Yeah, he yeah. lived right there. Okay. Yeah, so that would make sense. Yep. Um, yeah, I remember asking Nate Jackson. He was so good. He, even I remember my first memory of that dude skating. He was so good. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Um, I just remember like having like the. <laughs> I was ner- so scared, but I was just like, I was like trying to do nose manuals and couldn't, couldn't, I kept hitting my back or hitting my tail on the way down. It's <laughs> just like, remember like, being like, Hey man, like, can you help? What do you, do? How, how do you do it? And he was so nice. He was just like, Oh, Oh, you just kind of do like, he like, I was just, yeah, he was just like first time I ever met him. He was just like the nicest dude ever. Yeah. I was definitely being a kook and he was definitely like just super nice. So, do you remember how MSC closed down? Uh, I heard some stuff. Yeah. But then, like, I heard, like, dude... Yeah, I don't even know. I know it moved to Worcester. Oh, that's right. They did. Yeah, I know they moved to Worcester, and then, like... I'm not yeah. sure. I thought I thought the dude, the dude that started it ended up, like, moving out of the country or something. <laughs> or he went to go do, like, farming or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I heard something along those lines. Yeah, I don't know. I was young, so I wasn't, like, super, like, in the know of, like, anything, you know? Of course, yeah, Just, yeah. like, the older dudes. Like, I knew who, like, the older dudes were because I knew who to, like, 
get out of the way. Like if yeah. Alex Maldonado or something was like dropping in, like kick your board up. Like just wait a minute. Anthony Labosco, dude, he was one of the first dudes I saw there. I was thinking about him the other day, man. I didn't, I didn't know. I met him a few times. Like, I'm, yeah, I met him a few times, but like that dude was, I was thinking of that like Alice in Chains song that they like used for like his, for like his part. I think I heard that song or something mm-hmm. and like thought about it. I was like, that guy was so good. Yeah. Like that, like watch, like, I don't know if you can find one of the older theory videos, man. Like I think he has a part in like two of them and mm-hmm. like. I think it was the first one and then the the Four Seasons video, I believe. Yeah, so good, man. He was on he was on like some next Oh yeah, he should have been like or maybe he was sponsored, I don't know, cuz this is literally around the same time I that think, I started skating. I feel like he got I feel like is he, he was, girl. I feel like he was flow from like Girl and Choc- Girl yeah. and Chocolate, one of them, yeah. Okay, good. Right. Yeah, no, he was he was getting stuff. He was definitely getting stuff. That dude was so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Like, I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to speak on him too much because I don't, you know, I didn't really, like, know. But he was just, like, growing up, he was from Western Mass. He rode for Theory. He was so good. He was nice to all of us. Like, so I just, like, look up to him. Like, you know, like, all those first dude, the first, like, good dudes you see skating when you're younger, like, you'll always remember, like, and if they were, like, cool to you, then, like, cemented in your brain, like, yep. legend. If they were, like, dicks, still, you're, like, that dude was so good when I was a kid. You know what I mean? But there's like, yeah, I don't know. You remember that they were a dick, but like, they're still good. I don't know. I don't I try not to hold grudges to like dudes that were dicks to me when I was like a little kook kid, <laughs> like yeah. whatever. I don't know. Kids are annoying. I get it. <laughs> no, of course. But yeah, Anthony Labasco, all those dudes, like Barry Scott, those guys were all so yeah, good. Yeah. He like kick flipped the flushing meadow stairs. Like, in like 1998 or something yeah. like that. It was like a 411 opener. Really. Yep, like yep. Legendary. Like that's so beast. Yeah. First like trip trip we ever went on, like Cotto placed in some like uh Beast of the East contest in like upstate New York. And like Barry was like our chaperone. And we like took this van up to like upstate New York. We were like 16 or 17. So I high vaguely days. remember that. Dude, was so like Barry was so cool. He was just like Pretty much just, like, made sure we didn't blow it, but, like, showed us how to have fun. Mm-hmm. Like, I think I started, yeah, I, like, started smoking cigarettes on that trip. <laughs> <laughs> it was, like... It's fucking badass. Dude, I remember hating it, too. Just being, like, <sighs> this is cool. This is cool. Like, has nothing to do with Barry. It's just like, do you still smoke or no? No, no, no. Weird. Uh, cut it out. <laughs> yeah. How long? Did, how long ago did I quit or how long did I smoke for? No, how long did you go you just quit? I quit, uh, I don't know, like last summer. Oh, wow. Yeah. Damn. I think I, I was still flirting with, I would like still have like a rolly thing on me. Uh, I didn't so quit everything hard. last year. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I, but like. Yeah, the ratio got less and less, and now that it's just, I don't smoke cigarettes at all. That's good. No. I'll have, like, yeah. No cigs. <laughs> you know what's crazy, though, is that people, like, I haven't had a cig since February now, but I don't feel that much better. No, you won't. You're yeah, not going like, to feel better. <laughs> you're going to feel better in the sense that, like, you're not still smoking. You're not still smoking. Yeah. You don't smell like an ashtray. Your fingers don't stink. Like your hair, your hair smells good. Your clothes don't all smell like shit. Like, I don't know, man. I th- you, so you start delicious. noticing. You start noticing. You walk. You don't. You quit. You smoke, and then you quit, and then you walk by someone smoking a cigarette. Like even a week after you haven't had one, and it smells so gnarly. You're like you get so sensitive to it. You're like. That is disgusting. I know. But it's like, uh, that's like fucking anything that's considered a norm, be it to the general public or even just you as an individual, that can be trained and untrained so quickly. For example, if you look at someone now like without a mask, you're like, oh, 
oh shit, it's like a it's like a normal human being walking down the street without like some type of cover on their face. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's this? What's up with this guy? Yeah, like they, they stand out like a sore thumb now. Or especially if you see people shaking hands, you're like. Yo, little yeah. sketchy, but also I'm jealous and I want to do that right now because yeah. it's been fucking way too long. But like, I literally think I shook someone's hand in a dream recently, or like I thought about shaking someone's hand. It's like a phantom function. It's just like not being used now. And it's something, yeah. something you do 30 times a day for however many years. And yeah, yeah, you're not, you can't do it right now. So yeah, yeah it it's just, it's fucking weird. I guess it is like a phantom function. Yeah. Or, I mean, simply just like a habit. I'm so I'm stoked, trained. man, because I always I like <laughs> I always do bad with guessing what someone's gonna throw up to me for like a handshake. Like I always mess up the dap. Like I'll be like this, and someone will give me like the fist, and then like I switch to the fist, and then like that, and like, gear I end, shift. I end up just wide <laughs> open handing whatever they have, like. Like, it's just like, I just, it just ends up being horrible anyway. So like, <laughs> I never, I've never guessed right and done like a cool handshake. I'd, I'd rather that. <laughs> I'd honestly rather that than no contact. Just like, yeah, you know, I, know, I know. The past few years though. It's making light of it. The past few years, like I definitely have not grown up. I'm not a fucking adult. Sometimes I am. Yeah, right. I don't know. I, every every day you mature a little bit more. Any anything that you like, you've definitely grown up in the last two years. Yes, but I still feel in my head, especially if I'm having like a really good day, especially especially if I'm having a good day skating. I feel like I'm 19. That's good. It's fucking awesome. That's good. But the one thing that I have noticed about myself that makes me feel like a grown man. I go for the regular handshake, like the fucking man's man handshake, and then I do the daps these days. Oh, well, these days minus the last two months. Yeah. I don't know. I just I think, think it's... The handshake is solid, man. Yeah, exactly. It's solid. Put her it's, here. It's foolproof. Yeah. It's like a fucking, I don't know, like a, a pair of blue jeans. Sure. They, handshake. They work all the time. Blue jeans is a handshake. Yeah, exactly. Same thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I... I do. Actually. It's just like straightforward <laughs> and utilitarian and it works. Like, and there's that. There is, there's definitely, yeah. Yeah. There's a parallel there. Yeah. I'm fucking fried. If Brett was, no, here, I like, like, no, that's what I'm talking to. I, I love, this is like, like before this is, uh, this is ideal. Yeah. yeah. Like just talking shit. Yeah. This yes. is great. I don't, dude, I don't know anything. I'm just, I'm just talking to you and telling you what I think. <laughs> like, you know, I don't know. I, I see. I, I get that. Like, yeah, it's tried and true. Right. People have been doing the shaking hands like that for very long. It's like that or a bow. A bow. Yeah. That's you know what I'm saying? Great cust- customary yeah. Yeah, gesture, depending where you are. Some, uh, this co- comedian, Andrew Schultz, I don't know if you know who he is. Mm-hmm. I listen to him a lot because, like, he's got a YouTube channel that's kind of popping or. I don't even know why I'm saying kind of, and I sometimes listen. I listen to him pretty much every day, and he's very much popping. You fuck with him. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, like, I actually, I went as far as, like, DMing him and his video producer to see if I could work, because, like, once again, he's, his shit's popping. The long story short, he, uh, he went to networks to try to sell a comedy special. They weren't fucking with him, so he's like, cool, I'll do it myself. He did it himself, put it on YouTube. He got all the acclaim and fame that he was hoping for, and then some. His YouTube channel has only been growing for the past two or three years. All the while, obviously, YouTube is just like, there's such a fucking heavy focus on it now for clicks and also for revenue. Yeah, you get paid off that, huh? You can, you can. I think it's also just a really smart tool and platform to utilize to actually get your name out, get your brand out there, and also just prove to the world, like, if... If you're, uh, if what you're pitching is good, people will fuck with it. And also if your approach to how you're putting it out there is good, you know, only better. Anywho, he, uh, he was saying, he kind of made a a slide joke on one of his podcast episodes. He was like, well, it's like, what the fuck? People are talking about like new normal. We can't shake hands or dap up anymore. It's like, what are we going to bow? Like didn't work in China. (laughs) 
What do you mean? China is where the coronavirus oh, started. Oh, 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 sorry. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, they have to still do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's like, that's the, that's the norm. Yeah. No, but his joke was yeah. like, yeah, whether you're still, actually touching hands or not, it's like, you can still get diseases. So it's like, yeah. But, um, <laughs> sorry. I'm that like, that was the whole point. Um, I, yeah, I dude, everything. Yeah. Every, how, I don't know how anyone's going to like, it's not like things aren't just going to like reset. I don't think they should. It's not, yeah, it's not going to just be like, boop. All right. All right. It's been 24 weeks or however long, like they, you know, just hypothetically, it's been 24 weeks. We think we have this, we have, we think we have control over this. We think we got like, we got it, you know, we got a good scope on things. We got a vaccine. We know how to move forward. Hypothetically, go back to everything that you were doing before. Like, I don't want to. Yeah. It's like. It's kind of, it's weird. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. Like way before we were talking about like businesses and stuff, like it's, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's just weird seeing what's thriving and what's Mm -hmm. just not, I mean, there's a lot of small businesses that are closed right now that probably aren't reopening too. Yeah. That's the worst. It sucks. Once again, I just, it, the business closing will affect far more people than just who owns or works at the business. Like all those yeah, people I mean, that work there, they might have like, right. You build a community and stuff, you know? And yeah. 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 If you're, if you're supplying, if you're supply, if you're, blah, 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 if you're supplying a resource that people, especially if they need it. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that narrows it down quite a bit, but uh, if you're supplying like a resource that like, you know, people like, even if it's, you know, food whatever it is like it sucks um, yeah so, i don't know yeah it's, it's crazy um so you grew up in granville <laughs> it's true i did um uh before before the quick corona tangent and all that uh we were talking about you you and i growing up in western mass people like anthony Lobosco. so you obviously you know guy Lou. Uh yeah, he had uh, uh Unite. Yeah, yeah. Unite the sh- the shoot the store. Yeah. He worked and he worked for he worked at Theory before that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right when I started skating, or like, I remember the first time I ever went into Theory, he was working. Oh, okay. Okay. And then fast forward. Yeah. So I feel like he was a big reason for my exposure to like streetwear and street culture and like the cool side of skateboarding. Yeah. Which I feel like people like Anthony Labosco sort of represented. Sure. But he obviously was few and far between in a place like, uh, you know, Westfield or Western Mass period. Yeah. Where, I guess, did you find your inspiration, your creative inspiration? Because you, from Granville, you moved to Arizona pretty young, right? It was a direct move uh, or no? Uh, <laughs> I'm trying What's to... that story? I was... In, yeah, I went, sorry, it's like, I gotta, I was in Western, yeah, I grew up in Western Mass, and, um, I grew up with, like, Jeff Burke and Kata, we were talking about them, too, Mm -hmm. but also, uh, uh, Scott Stevens, and Austin Granger, who went on to both be successful snowboarding, um, and they were, Scott was instructing at Mount Hood, um, doing like, he was like pro and doing like signature, like sessions at Mount Hood. Like I didn't, I don't snowboard, but, um, I think Jeff did a little bit. Burke does still probably. Uh, but we went out to go visit and stay for like a week. Like we weren't doing camp, but we just like went as guests and stayed in Oregon in Mount Hood for a week so fun dude it was like it was was so cool like i mean we weren't there doing what you're supposed to be there doing like we were like crashing right i never even clipped or like strapped into a snowboard like i never even went up the mountain (laughs) like i was just like there but there's a skate park there and like um the skate instructor was uh micah hollinger oh and i met him and 
he's like the coolest dude ever. <laughs> and, um, he was doing like a, a little brand after that. And I was living in Western mass and was like going to community college. It's like my first or second semester in community college. I was like, this sucks. Like, I think, I don't think I, I might've done a year. I don't even remember. I was not, I clearly wasn't very invested. It's just like, I was like, I guess I should go to school more. I don't know. I like, I knew I didn't want to like focus, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, I moved out to Arizona in like winter and yeah, stayed with Micah. It was super sick. Yeah. (laughs) Just like getting a skate every day and like, yeah, it was awesome. Just kind of like did that for a while and then would go all the, all the snowboard dudes lived in Salt Lake off, you know, when it wasn't summer. So I went up and stayed with them. It was like met a bunch of people there. Just like, I like it out here, man. Like when it gets cold, I'm just going to go to Arizona when it's nice. I'm going to stay in Salt Lake. Like, Mm -hmm. like, I ended up just kind of being in Utah, in Salt Lake, but yeah, man, I don't know. It's weird. I kind of just was floating for a while, like just going with, going with the flow, whatever seemed like it was the thing like worth doing, like it was possible. is <laughs> just like doing it, but uh, met so many rad people in that weird little, like two and a half year time period, three years or something. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, if you like, never would have thought I lived in, would just randomly go move to Salt Lake City. Mm-hmm. But it was like it's one of the top cities I've ever been. I like, I love it. It's it super, super rad. Lots of so, so many cool people there. Actually, like the skate scene is like pretty good. And there's a lot of stuff to skate. Um, Utah's so weird. It's so pretty. Like. Salt Lake City is like in, like it's like surrounded fully by mountains. It's like pretty breathtaking to like look around when you're there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've never been there, but I've been. It's cool. I visited Boise, Idaho via Google Maps and North Dakota. Via Google, like you just chilled on Google Maps or you went there? On Google Maps. Oh. <laughs> like I, th- so the first DSLR I ever bought. I remember I was following the tracking for it and to pay it back because I bought it on a credit card to pay it back. I worked like seven days straight catering. And that one day that I knew it was coming, I got the day off. I woke up at like 630 in the morning because I was so excited and I just couldn't go to sleep. So I was like, fuck it. I'll make coffee, smoke a cigarette and just go on Google Maps and like try to find skate spots. And then I would go around like we lived in crown heights at the time. So I would like go around crown heights and I was like, all right, like whatever I could just skate around here to take the bike. And then I started going to places like Oregon because I was like, Oh, there's no, like I've never really seen videos out of Portland, Oregon. And I watched Portlandia a lot back then. So I, I like traveled to Portland, Oregon. And then I was like, yo, what about like the way bumfuck out there parts? And like, you never really hear shit about skateboarding. Mind you, once again, this Yo, is 2012. Boise is sick, though. I have no clue, dude. There's some. I I know some dudes from that are from there that are rippers. Like, Boise's kind of sick. Oh, I'm sure. Low key, yeah. Yo, but I remember going virtually to Boise, Idaho, and just looking around, and I'm like, damn, like this is fucking gorgeous. Yeah, because it's like it's it kind of looked like a a mix of like Springfield, Northampton, with just snow-capped mountains all around yeah yeah it's so sick yeah it's so pretty man like yeah idaho colorado uh wyoming is fucking yeah insane yeah I, dude i like i we i traveled like i didn't spend too much time in all of those states like i've spent more time in denver than i have in uh or in colorado yeah denver specifically than i have in you know idaho and stuff like that but like i've like cruised through driving Mm-hmm. This place this is all it's all sick, but like yeah, it's like it would seem like the middle of nowhere, but like I don't know. I guess because it's in the middle of the country. Yeah, yeah, but well, because there's such like look, look at Minnesota, like Minneapolis, like 
brimming with like gnarly skateboarders and like skateboarding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I wouldn't want to live there for like most of the year. No, of course. But I'm not even like take the skateboarders out of the equation. Yeah. I'm just saying like the. It was just a place that you would I would have never thought to even consider going to. You yeah, know what I mean? So I was like, well, I guess I'll just do it for free. Like, it's off my computer chair. Yeah, you know. But I might even. I was thinking about it recently of selling my car, buying a cheaper little SUV, like a like a CRV or something, or like a Rav Four, and just taking that across the country, like doing the southern route, and then coming up in like you know three weeks or whatever, four weeks when it's June, coming up the northern route when it's warmest. Yeah, thought about doing that, dude. If you don't hate being in the car, then I advise it. <laughs> like, have you done that trip, the cross country? I've done it. Yeah, I've done it in like. A couple, di- not a couple different ways. I've done like, I've done New York to, I've done New York to Salt Lake. I've done Salt Lake to Mount Hood. I've done, and I've, I don't know, I've been on a few trips that were like, just kind of all over the place, but nothing ever went straight across. But like, I almost, yeah, I, I think New York to Salt Lake was like the longest one. That was pretty, that was pretty good. Did it in like no time too. We like only pulled over and like stayed in one night. It was like, we just drove. Like we did like nap, nap time, pull over, chill out. But like, yeah, we did it like quick. Damn. But um, yeah, man, if you can take a couple weeks and do it like. Well, cause I'm on a project right now until June 9th and then. As far as I know, there probably won't be that much work after. There's not, I mean, they're not doing like travel. They're not doing travel ban stuff like on the highways. Like Exactly. And I don't know. gas hasn't been this cheap since like. Gas is cheap. What, 2002? My, yeah. My, my brother works with like motorhomes and stuff like that. Like, like, uh, and he's, he was just saying like, it's like there's a lot of people like trying to like invest in like recreational vehicles, not like big lavish so much like big lavish, like bug out M- vans, MTV cribs style RVs necessarily. I'm sure some people that have like the flair for that sort of thing and like just money to burn. Yeah. But like people are like more interested in buying these things or like investing in them to like, as a means of traveling and like vacation, like, no one wants to go on a cruise right now. Yeah, of course. No one really wants to get on an airplane right now. Mm-hmm. So it's like, mm. I kind of do. I, I'm getting on one in a, less than a week. You'll be all right. Yeah, no, I'm not tripping, but I, yeah. Um, but I like the idea of, yeah, I don't know, man. I like being in the car. <laughs> I don't mind it either. I just don't know that I won't lose my mind being solo. But then again, there is like a fucking million podcasts out there. A million podcasts. I could probably figure it out. Dude, he, like sp- spicy sunflower seeds or something. Like, you know what I mean? There's like all these like spice. I don't know. There's like things you can eat. Do, you know, stay awake. Stay up. Oh. Stay sane. Oh, true. I don't yeah. know. There's like car snacks. That yeah, yeah, if you're yeah. driving a long distance, like. I guess that makes sense. I never yeah. thought about that. I mean, I used to just chain smoke. <laughs> yeah, that's the fucking best one. Just chain smoke and like it's terrible, but it drink feels great. tons of coffee and like if you think about it, it's insane. Like drinking tons of coffee and smoking cigarettes, driving. It's like you know, what I mean? monster energy but drinks. Then this like big. yeah, then there's like I don't know. I can't do that. I feel like anymore. truckers took amphetamines back in the day at some point too, mm-hmm. like to like keep driving. <laughs> yeah, it's like the fifties. Like yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, maybe I'll make it out to Dude, imagine that. To the west via car. Yeah. Well anyways, what brought you back from the west coast to the east? Because you lived in Boston or right before New York? No, I moved I went back to Western Mass, but I got an apartment in Northampton. Oh. Such a random move. Uh solo? Yeah, I was, dude, it was a girl. It was like a girl thing. Always. Yeah. Uh, it was a girl thing, and it didn't last very long. 
Um, and that was when I got like, I started, that was like my first time I got like a job as an adult. I mean, I had always had jobs as a teenager, but like, I, I, I mean, I like moved to out West and like worked gigs and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I, I, dude, I was like 22 or something, 21. I was young still. Yeah, I was like 22. Yeah, I think I was like something like that. Um, and I lived with Noah Hoos for a little while too. And I oh, was, no shit. Yeah, I was working. I worked, I got a job at Ur- Urban Outfitters. The one in Northampton? In the bank. Yep, yep. Yeah. It was like my first like non skate shop retail job. That's hilarious. <laughs> super funny. I super funny thinking about. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I got promoted like super quick, and they were like, "Yo, do you want to go to Boston and like be like a department manager?" And I was like, "I want to go to Boston." Yeah, so I like, <laughs> moved to Boston. This is the only part you hear. Well, yeah, like, dude. Well, like it was like a it was dude. Northampton's chill. It's not a lot of. Pe- it's like pretty casual, like low foot traffic. You know, it's mm-hmm. like all college kids. So, uh, but yeah, I went to move to Boston and worked in, like I started working at Faneuil Hall and that Urban Outfitters. And was, dude, it was like, <laughs> it was so crazy. That's psycho. Dude, it was so psycho. Like they're like, it's going to be high volume. And I just remember being like, yeah, cool. Yeah. Turn up the volume. <laughs> and I got there. I was like, this is so hectic. I hate this. Like, this is insane. Like, it was just like frenzy. St- you know what I mean? Like, it's people, tourists, like so many of them right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. But I kept, I kept working there. Uh, I kept like doing good, I guess. Kept getting like different jobs. I like worked in all the, the urbans in Boston. <laughs> like went to like the, came, I worked in the Harvard Square one for a while. Went to, and then was like helping run the Alston store and, Dude, I was so miserable. <laughs> so after a while, I mean, I, they kept, I kept getting like promotions and stuff. Like I worked there for like two years. Like it, a lot happened in like two years working there. Like a lot happened in my life too. I like stopped, like pretty much stopped skating. It was just like, dude, I, I worked like 50 hours a week, like all sorts of overtime I was making like rent and stuff. But like, I wasn't balling. I was, I hated it, dude. <laughs> like I was just like, <laughs> felt like I was just working too much or something. Um, uh, but I was getting really good at partying around that time though. (laughs) That goes hand in hand with like the, like not skating. Yeah. Fuck yeah. It does fully just like, yeah, dude, I was, I was like, I didn't drink when I was younger really. But and like, even when I like lived out West, I drank a little bit and whatever experimented with stuff, but I wasn't like never a big drinker. But yeah, like around that, I was just like, I was definitely partying in Boston for like, I just wasn't happy with like what I was doing, I don't think. <laughs> but uh, one of my friends asked me, was uh, one of my friends was a sale, uh, worked for Mark Jacobs and lived in New York, but was like visiting and came and like stayed with me at my apartment. It was just like, you know, we were just having like, she's, kicking it she's just like oh are you happy with what you with what you're doing like I was like no not really and she's like maybe kind of you know what I think you could come work like here and I was like I don't even know what Mark Jacobs is you know what I mean like it was just like I was like a 22 year old or yes. 23 year old like skateboard I don't know how old I was like something like that but I wasn't like into high or like into like the fashion world like I had some frames of reference and stuff I, I knew who Mark Jacobs was but I didn't like I just like was like Hand, I just like it was like oh that's like handbags or some shit yeah well that's what I was pertaining to earlier it's like we're, we're from Western Mass like that's not right in our periphery you know what I'm saying like no dude not at all skateboarding isn't really either I mean like in some I started I did my first pop shove it in like a barn you know I got yeah. a concrete patch in a barn you know what I mean like, but that skateboarding but is still more within that's still reach. more worldly than than like luxury retail exactly sure uh, but yeah, I went and interviewed for a job and was just like, yeah, um, 
I don't really know anything. Like I had like my hair was super long at that point. And it's just like kind of like, I don't, don't want to say like, Oh, I was kind of fried, but like <laughs> I wasn't like on my most motivated, like in my life, but you know, it was just, just, just vibing. But, uh, they were like, yeah, you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. We have to hire you. And like, they, I was like, they gave me a job as a salesperson selling like women's ready to wear in handbags. Just super funny. But I did all right with it. Uh, I liked it. Everyone that I worked with there was super cool. I just like, it was weird. It was just like a whole different thing. Went from like big box retail, like just folding 2000 shirts a day and just being like, I don't know why, like the feeling like, I don't know. I wasn't like, obviously not striving to look for purpose working in that (laughs) position, but like, and I didn't find it going to work for like a luxury retail, but it was just like, it was a good leap. It was a good Mm -hmm. leap. Uh, cause it slowed things back down to like, uh, you know, had to learn how to sell handbags. I had to learn a lot cause I'm not going to do show up and do anything and, and look, I mean, aside from like, maybe this, like show up and just mm-hmm. look like an asshole, <laughs> you know, like, like I'm just, I'm just teasing. I'm not good with like public speaking necessarily, but like, I'm not going to show up to like a job if I don't like know that I can do it or know what I'm talking about or be able to like, I can't fake being interested. So I was like, I need to do my homework. So I did, I like just kind of learned a lot of uh, reference points and just learned and actually kind of got interested in like the more I started learning and, and as far as like women's clothing, like just things that you don't as like a dude, I guess that's just like maybe like, I don't know, you don't think, I don't know, shape, you know, there's different, there's different, so many different like thing layers of, of aesthetic. Mm-hmm. And I didn't go to like fashion school or art school or anything like that. So like, I don't know any perspective I've gained just been from like on site, like learning stuff or getting, becoming interested or curious and like Mm -hmm. learning. Cause it's just like, yeah, I want to, I want to figure this out, but like, I'm not going to like, I got to like really figure this out and figure out what I like, why I like it. You know what I mean? Like there's some things you just like, you don't know why, but, um, I think just like, was trying to like be prepared for the job that I was doing, but like found that I, really was fascinated and um, enjoyed and could obsess over like minute details of it that were like never really thought about Mm -hmm. stuff like this and got, you know, I don't know. I was just like, I could, I just wanted to learn more. Yeah. And learn more and expanded your, your horizons. Yeah. And that was like right around the time I started like assisting, uh, some, artists and stuff like that too. And so it's just like, I think I just started like realizing that I had interests outside of skateboarding and stuff like that. And that was okay. And that was, you know, if I'm lucky and it seems like I could be, cause I kind of got this job and then realized that I like certain like elements of it. I might be able to find happiness and work Mm -hmm. through what I already have like a few years of experience in, I just need to, you know what I mean? Like I kind of, it kind of things started to click a little bit like that. I was like, this is a good opportunity. Like just learn as much as you can. So I just started taking any job that they'd offer me in the company. So I was like, ended up doing being like a stock guy for a while. And then I went to like help run logistics for their like vacation store in Cape Cod and then went to New York and then ended up working in New York for bookmark, like the bookstore. And that was just like way more up my alley. It was just like all like art books and like rare books and just cool stuff. Like, I don't know. And I got to learn how to do like corporate logistics a little bit and like fill out, customs forms really quick you know what I mean just like understand back end Mm -hmm. and at that point I was feeling like I didn't want to I couldn't I didn't I knew in my heart I wasn't like a salesman I was super interested I could like if I like something I can 
I might, if I sell something to you, it's going to be because I like it and I'm just telling you how much I honestly like it. And like, I'm telling you what I like about it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, nonsense. Yeah. I don't have like the schmoozing angle where it's just like, I don't know, not good at marketing, but yeah. like, if I like something like, dude, I'll tell you everything about it. So I think that's always been my angle. So I like, I realized that like, if my mind works like that, then I should be doing some, I should be using it for, so it's like, I can retain information that people don't necessarily care about. I should learn logistics. You mm-hmm. know, it's just like, cool. Like get in where you fit and where you feel more comfortable. It's just, after that it just turned into like working for an art gallery and uh, doing odd jobs. And then eventually the print shop, I wanted to be on the other end. I realized that I was working in retail and there's something that I liked about product and I liked about uh you know all of the, like I, there's something but it wasn't being on the sales force selling it like I don't care how much commission I'm able to make like I realized that I was more interested in making the stuff mm-hmm. after a while but I wanted to learn everything else first like I didn't I knew I wasn't I didn't go to design school like I didn't at the time didn't feel like it was like possible to be like just mobbing it and trying to, and just going for it, just throwing darts at the wall and just start trying stuff really a little bit, but like, you know, I don't know. It didn't have confidence. Yeah. But I think once I figured out that like there was something that I wanted to be doing and realized that I had all these resources around me, that I respected and didn't ever want to like take for granted. It was just like, I can really, really be learning. It's like the same thing. It was like, like realizing during doing this job that I had, that there was something I really enjoyed about it. It wasn't exactly what I was doing right then, but there was something that I wanted to work towards mm-hmm. that was going to be, take me further than, you know, working for this company. It's something that I want to like really get into. So I guess my, it's the longest answer in history. I guess I got like some of my perspective or like inspiration for wanting to do that stuff just by being all right with not knowing what was going to happen the next day in like being able to like be floating around after I left home the first time and like moved out West, like, just really just drinking in all this as much life as I could. Like you look at the mood. I look at, I, I've, I've never been a crazy dresser my, myself, but I love putting that stuff together. I love, I love making stuff. I love seeing other people wearing crazy stuff. Like I love looking at what people are wearing. Like I really do. And if it's like bad or looks crazy, like there's probably something really cool about it too. Like, like, I don't know there. I love, I always have loved it. I, and I guess just like from getting further into it, just realizing that like I, a lot of the things that I remember about movies and like a lot of things I remember about action figures and stuff like that, like childhood memories or my teachers or like anything. It's like, I remember what they wore all the time, you know, like it's weird. Like I started like going back and being like, there is something that really like, yeah. sinks in with me like I don't know it's weird like the like I don't know like my friend one of my friends that I hang out with often could be like I have this one orange shirt and I'll be like is it this one or this one because like, you know what I mean like I take note of that stuff like not in like a snobby way if anything it's embarrassing like how much that, you know what I mean like I think about that stuff sometimes but like I mean, I get it. Like you, it's not all brands. It's like it's not brands either. It's like, yo, he's got the Stone Island jacket. It's not Um, like that. I'm just like, dude, like that dude had like those weird purple corduroys or something like that. Like I don't know. It's like it could be anything. Like I don't know. Yeah, it's it's more. It's the nuances. It's more like yeah, like it's not labels. It's like I guess the things that I realized I liked were like fit texture i don't know pairings of things like i don't know yeah it's cool like I, the inspiration for making stuff or like 
liking the stuff is just like trace trying to trace interests like things that you've historically maybe been interested in but not realize you're staring at mm-hmm. you know what i mean like you can be like looking at something for, and not even realize someone be like yeah what are you staring at you're like oh sh-. you know what i mean like realizing like the subconscious like really like that like and like look at yeah i don't know like trying to tune into the subconscious yeah, yeah. I'll look at, yeah, like, yeah. family photo albums and stuff like that, too. Like, I was just, like I said, I was just at home looking through, through photo albums and, like, looking at all the, like, clothes that, like, my folks were wearing in the 70s and my little, or my older brother and sister and stuff like that. I was just looking at the gear and I'm like, yo, this is so sick. Like, everyone yeah. looks so cool. Like, at this time, like, I don't know. It's all because I mean now it's like all the stuff that you see in the vintage stores and right. stuff like that. Yo, isn't that crazy though? Like when when we were I don't know. I guess probably teenage. How old are you now? Thirty two. Okay, <laughs> thirty one. So like we're about we're yeah. a year apart. But I feel like when we were teenagers, the eighties were cool. People were dressing like the eighties, and that's when I first you know once again to bring up Guy Lou. I think that he was probably the first person to mention to me the the cliche that fashion cycles itself every 15 to 20 years. And I was like, yeah, I guess, okay, whatever, we'll see. 20 years later, I can look at a photo of myself in the year 2000 or like 99-ish, track pants. Yeah. What do I wear every single day except for, you know, I guess today? Fucking track pants. It's like track pants and sneakers. Dude, I remember you very well when like theory like the first times meeting you i remember like i think the homies used to like i mean not rag on you but like give you a hard time because you'd have like a full change of clothes in your backpack all the time or something like you always had gear on you i feel like i might have not to like not in like some corny way but it's like you just got done doing something and you had like a switch of pants or something like and i just remember you always having like or like an extra sweater. So I just remember you having, yeah. and then be like, yo, you got mad clothes on you, bro. And you're just like, whatever. Cause I just remember you just being like, cool. Like just letting it roll off. Like whatever, bro. I was just like, yo, that's yeah. sick. Yo, back then I also, I definitely got very inspired by Brandon Beeble. It was like, I remember specifically too, it was 2003. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Came out and yeah. he had first part and yeah. Right. Sure did. And I was skated, like, skated that ghost face instrumental. Yeah. I was like, yo, I want to, so I want to be like that dude. I did so many fucking push ups that summer. I swear. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Dude, Beeble. Be- yeah, yeah. Have you seen him with the teeth? Yeah. Real yeah, quick. Of course. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> They're whiter than that wall. That's so hijinks. It's awesome. Um, it's like that. It's like that light. Yeah, exactly. Like 20 of them in his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, I remember specifically like, and maybe it was even when Levels closed and Theory Bottom and they moved into that the the store right there mm-hmm. on you know in downtown Amherst yeah, on yeah. Pleasant Street, or whatever. That's, I met you in that theory. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And um I remember like around that time we used to steal so much stuff, including clothing. <laughs> in Amherst. And not even in Amherst. No, I mean, because it was like, there was only mom and pops. Yeah, you can't do that. And because we were like such a little liberal. Nah, but there's malls and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I we'd go to the Hampshire Mall or we'd go to across the street to the Walmart that just had just opened up there. And yeah, we used to raid that shit. And I remember just getting like, one time, stealing a pair of pants. Some like old faded glories. But I didn't even look at the size. I just thought that they fit me. And I like probably snuck them up my shirt and left. And they were a little too big. And I was like, yo, I'm like mad fresh. And then I just kept on getting bigger and bigger jeans for like the next three years. Yeah, just size them up. Yeah, trying to fit in with my um, my fo- worship of Brandon Beeble. <laughs> and then also, you know, just like when you're growing up around that age, you're also trying to buy clothes and shoes that are going to, you know, withstand Go the, the distance. Of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that's why like even these days I, I think about some of like, I definitely used to wear like size 10 and a half sneakers. I know for a fact now I'm like a nine, a nine and a half. Yeah, dude. I, I wore 12s when I was like starting skating and then I tried to stuff. I don't know. I must've like told like the first rep that gave me shoes that I was a 10. So I just stuffed my feet into 10s for like, 
I don't know. I just like skated shoes that were too small forever. Oh. And like now I'm like, I'm an 11. Like, yeah, it's like, dude, it's so all over the place. But I straight up dress like pretty much the same as I always did forever. Ever since high school. The only thing is like my pants have gotten looser. Yeah. That's it. And I'm wearing like not skate shoes. Right. But like the vibe's been like pretty much the same. Um, I think the pants just got a little bit tighter because I like wanted to be on zero for a minute or something. <laughs> like not really wanted to be on zero, but like that's I was so fucking hyped on that. Yeah. Stuff. Like, yeah, it's so funny. Like I, I, I'm thinking now, too. And I've been thinking about it just you know, what else are you going to do during quarantine? You go through your closet 15 times a month. And I'm like, oh, wow. Like I have like different pattern pants and slightly different fits of pants or styles. But for the most part, I've pretty much always worn something that's like looser. Like I never had, I I maybe have like a pair or two of slim fit jeans. Yeah. But slim is like essentially just like regular taper. It's not like slim like skinnies you know what i mean yeah, yeah. i never really got down to skinnies the skinnies yeah even when like in 2009 and 10 when flannels were the hot shit flannels? and everyone's wearing remember everyone was wearing like a flannel dickies oh yeah and you know carhartt beanies or whatever like that was the steez yeah it's like everyone saw their first anti-hero video or something. something like that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, or we were just like old enough to drink and uh, that was a skater uniform, bro. It still kind of is. Like, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Flannel shirt and yeah, Dickies. But even back then, I remember I was like, I would buy eight seventy four Dickies, like the regular fit, and I'm like, you these kind of fit like a little, little skinny. Like they right. weren't, like, they weren't as big as my five sixty nine Levi's. Sure. But now I realize I'm like, oh no, my pants weren't really that much smaller. I just thought they were because they weren't like sweatpants or like loose denim. Right. But it was all the same shit. It was all relative. Here's a here's a classic here's a classic outfit, skate fetish shit. Uh, brown dickies. Uh, you already lost me. <laughs> brown dickies, green t shirt, and like Vans old schools. Like that's like like a green Spitfire shirt, a green anti hero. You know what I'm saying? Like that's like always been like appearing in like those videos. Like like forest green. No, like fucking. Uh, like like the FedEx green, like oh like yeah, like straight straight skate yeah. shop green, like yeah, you know what yeah, I mean, yeah. like just like they're not custom tones, like the the shirts, like or royal blue, royal blue with like royal blue shirt with like this is like the era that we started skating, like yeah. big black cup sole shoes, fucking tan dickies and like a royal blue shirt or like yep. brown dickies with a green shirt and like black americas like right. pretty much what ed templeton's been like wearing for like ever yeah like i don't know that's like that's like classic skateboard to me yeah 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 like all like all those dudes like always wearing like it's like yeah yeah it's weird like i know ne- you never noticed i don't know i never like noticed th- that like all those dudes are wearing that shit I don't know. That's just like the most like classic like skate shop look. Ever. For sure. <laughs> it's like But I'm saying like I th- I I saw some photos recently of um some of our friends from that time. Like I mean th- this would be a prime example of a, a, like uh a little sampler of exactly what I'm talking about. What was Ali's website? Faded, the fade or Faded Streets. Faded Streets. Yeah, that blog, that shit was crazy. Yes. I got a tattoo. I forget what leg it's on, though. (laughs) The fade tat, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You and several people got that, right? Oh, there's a, yeah, there's a, there's a big A lot of faders. There's a lot of, yeah. Dude, that was crazy. That was like Romac, Resenis. Ollie, I think it was there, uh, technically, like, there's, yeah. like, Jeff Allen and Mola, Nick Mola. I don't know. Yeah, it's a, that blog was crazy. Yeah. That was, like... But I feel like some of those photos, though, you could definitely... OG group chat. Yeah. OG group chat, you could definitely sample some, like, 2008-era fits. Some real shit in there. Yeah, a lot of blurry Blackberry photos. 
Yo. <laughs> yeah, a lot of Volcom jeans and shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. DVS Volcom shoes jeans. and Volcom jeans. Yep. Maddox. Maddox basketball jerseys. Damn, who wore that? A Maddox basketball jersey? Yeah. Was that common? I don't, I don't remember. Know. But that was like a thing. That was like this. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty common. Someone at the park would be wearing that. But at the, yeah, at that point, though, Brixton was like, move over, Maddox. Yeah. They were coming in. Dude, I remember... If, I remember when Brixton was just a hat company at first. They only made like fedora, not just fedoras, but they made fedoras. They made like those like, I call them Brixton hats, like the like driver hats kind of. You know what I'm talking about? Driver hats. I don't know what they're called. They're like caps. They're like. Like uh, cycling caps? Like a captain hat almost. Like they still make them, the Brixton hats. I mean. Fuck, I don't know. Oh. I well, they're making like they're making like hats at first. Not okay. before they were, they might have been doing shirts and stuff. But I remember when they first were like when Theory first got Brixton, like when it was first around. It was like, oh, this shit's kind of cool. It's like, oh, yeah. Like, what? It, like, yeah. I, I don't know. The stuff was like kind of nice, and they're like making flannels and stuff like that. Yeah, it just right. like annihilated some of the stuff. That yeah. company's grown so big since it started Brixton oh for sure I imagine they probably sell at places like Zoomies now and PacSun's all that I th- yeah I think so yeah. yeah it's like global big up to those dudes uh, uh, David and Peter Brixton those dudes super cool um, yeah yeah a lot of I don't know I feel like a lot of our friends are like connected with that like that like Coakley Road Forum forever yep yep um, our friend Jason Lee, who is also like part of the like faded streets chat is mm-hmm. like, done like the, I don't know what he does there. Like, he's like the brand manager or like whatever, but he's been there forever. Like, yeah, Brixton's, yeah, it's cool. It's huge. Yeah, big, big company. Who are you ever sponsored by? I was just like flow guy forever, man. Like total flow guy. Um, I like, it's like Homie flow and f- straight flow. Um, Rob Ponce, rest in peace. Absolute fucking legend. East Coast skate rep, for, like, God status. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, he hooked me up first through, like, rep flow for Osiris. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stoked to, like, tell you that. Did you ever skate a D3? I did not skate a D3, nor did I, like, have the gall to, like, ask for what I, for stuff then. Oh, I was just got so, whatever. Bro, I was so juiced to, like, he, and, like, dude, Rob was such a knower. Like, he knew what was, you know what I mean? Like, he knew. Like, you weren't going to get some, like, dumb shit if mm-hmm. he was sending it to you. Like, unless it, he was trying to, like, poke at you, uh, which is possible. But, like, no, he never, he sent me, like, the Jerry Sue shoe, okay. which was, like, a, half cab pretty much a half cab right um oh yeah a worse half cab <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i do i yeah i would skate whatever like if i'm getting it it's cool it's like i, I never got like yeah i wish i got the d3s now though <laughs> so I have. um do you remember ro- like just to just to go off into off road real quick like how sick was that when like uh like the D3s came back like 2 years ago and like you remember, I don't know, never mind. Do you remember that like like who was it? It was like Under Armour, someone like bit the D3. Yeah, yeah, Under Armour made a D3 ASAP Rocky. Yeah, shoe. yeah, Rocky was wearing but I seen I mean I seen photos of him wearing like actual D3s too, that I think. Well, yeah. I mean like they but it had like a moment. It had like a month where like people were like, fuck, I'm buying. I got I got to I'm buying them <laughs> like yeah, somehow. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. that's also the response in the States. They've been popping in Spain. I'm sure in other parts of Europe, too. Oh, for but sure. Yo, dude, there will be like the hot, the baddest chick ever in Spain walking down the street in Barcelona. And then you look at her feet and you're like, fuck that. She's like wearing D3s? Yeah. It would be funny if they're still wearing the like, 
uh, those etnies, the pink, white and pink ones, the Calicuts. No. Nah. Remember that one? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Disgusting. That Class- was just like... Classique. I'm sure someone in fucking Ohio is still rocking them. No offense to Ohio, but there's some definitely some bad fits out there. And like, I don't know, maybe you could still find them in like the Holy Oak. <laughs> yeah. Chicopee. Savers. Yeah, actually, I've definitely seen. Dude, you uh, get, actually, you should. Yeah, this, the, the, the big box stores out there have treasures sometimes. Mm-hmm. I remember I found. This is years ago. It's when I still lived. I still lived in Western Mass. Like, I don't even know, man. Like ten years ago, uh, I remember going to like a TJ Maxx or something like that in Westfield, and I got a pair of like the Gone slip-ons, like Adidas skate slip-ons, mm-hmm. for like twenty-five bucks. I was really confused as to like why they had them. But like the skate shop didn't even have them, and they were twenty five bucks. It was just you know what I mean. It was just like yeah. What I think it's um, it has something to do with volume, volume. Yeah, yeah. And like a lot of times, Adidas is such a big company that, or they could have been like the ones that were like glued funny or something like that. Could be yeah. Also, but I bought. I remember like it was. I had no money. I was. I mean, like, I don't have money now, but, like, I, I had no money as a kid. I was, like, 22, 21 or something. Like, remember, like, dude, there's two pairs of them in my size. I'm buying both. I remember I was just, like, I think it was, like, probably, Big like, a, flex. dude, it was, like, a $50 purchase, but I was, like, dude, I bought two pairs. Like, I'm psycho. Like, now yeah. people, like, you know what I mean? Like, of course. With everything. Yeah. Like, one to rock, one to stock or mm-hmm. whatever. I don't know what people say. Um, yeah, I remember talking to Keith Denley about that one time mm-hmm. because Nike had that Lunar Lawn shoe, the Lunar Lawn one shots, I think. So good. Yeah. Those ended up, sorry, go ahead. A lot of them were at Marshalls and TJ Maxx. Yeah. And so I asked them, I was like, dude, what's the deal? Because like, this is the shoe pretty much just came out. Like I'm pretty sure you could still find an ad for it. It's like in a $90 the shoe too. Yeah. And they were being sold for... Mind you, especially the colorway that I wanted, the fucking tennis ball green ones yeah. were the cheapest ones, $30. I was like, easily. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it was incredible. But I, he even he was like, like wrong about it. Yeah. He, well, no, no. He was like, dude, I like, I honestly, they don't even tell me about what the deal is with that. No, yeah, different accounts. But I imagine, yeah, like I imagine it's just like they make a surplus. It might not be selling that well. Um, and, you know, and like instead of sending it to shops that they know, the shop won't sell them. They'd rather just like Liquidate. hand them off to like a third party, such as TJ Maxx. Yeah. Which I mean, is fine with me. Yeah. Now, I mean, now you can go on Amazon and like s- search a shoe in size and like, you know, find what store has them. Like they might not even have an online shop. They're selling it through Amazon. You know what I mean? Like it's weird. That's, it's a little, it's, that's, that's I, it's, it's different, but. Yeah, that's suspect, though, because my ex-girlfriend, she worked for a boot company, and she had, she was a, a sales account exec, and some of her accounts were not supposed to be doing that, but they do that. They'll, like, yeah, they'll order sure. way higher numbers, being like, yeah, our store mm-hmm. is doing great. Half of it's for online. Oh, more. Yeah. Yeah, normally it'd be, like, 80% online, 20% store. Yeah. Because they make better margins, like A lot guess. of people do that. Yeah. It's weird. Uh, I remember, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> About to just air something out. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that happens a lot. But a lot of companies now, like, are trans, or, like, it's better. I mean, a lot of companies are transparent now, especially with smaller brands that they're selling. Like, mm-hmm. this is going to this store, this is going to the, this is going to our LA store, this is going to our New York store, and this is going to the online shop. Like, different POs or whatever. Yeah. But, I don't know there's only certain companies that are making volume like that, that they're going to department stores. Right. Right. But I mean, like growing up, like if I think back to like some of the big box stores that are around, like where we grew up, like that's where you'd find like airwalks and vans and stuff like that before, you know, I mean they had Nikes and Adidas and stuff too, but I think my had like horse vision on like, I wanted, I was into like airwalks and vans and like the vans that they had, now looking back are like pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but yeah, all those stores, it's, yeah, it's weird. Like thinking, like looking at it from like a business perspective, seeing like why that stuff was there is kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Cause it's like, it's technically like a niched product, but then it's in like such a mass arena. Right. The overages. I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. It's, I guess it's just anomalies is yeah. really what it comes down to. Yeah. And they're like available to like the public. That's not like super into it. Mm-hmm. And like way less money. To I don't know. It's just weird. Yeah. Or maybe it's even like a, a trial run. It's like, let's see if this could be like the, the price point shoe or something. Yeah. Either way. Now more than ever. Buy them from the skate shop. Yeah. Save, save the skate shops for sure. Um, do you think you'll ever have your clothes in skate shops? I know. Like, what, what do you plan to do? Um, or maybe like particular ones, like I, more boutique. Actually, ones? thanks to Christy, they are right now. <laughs> I just did that thing oh, with Christy, and, right. and that's and so by extension of working with a skate shop account person. Yeah, okay, I did stuff with CNY, and that sell, that was selling to I think some shops. Some yeah, true. Shops, but but as as that's not. I mean, that's that's going around the point. But as like the Emerson I think, brand, like, I. I mean, it's like, I was never trying to start a brand per se, really. Um, it's like, I just like working with tons of different people. And I just had some ideas that I wanted to see get put into motion. And like, I had like the super fortunate experience of becoming friends with all the dudes at uh, Look. And working there as a like printing and helping in the shop for like over two years. And, you know, just that paired with like, you know, retail experience before and like other artistic ventures that have always been like happening and present in my life. And uh, I just wanted to like, you know, like I wanted to, you know, started, you know, while I was working there. You know, after hours or whatever, like, you know, Al, Alex would let me, you know, work on, on stuff and, you know, kind of make I workshop ideas and stuff like that, like screen print shirts. And I was doing, you know, like I was just helping, uh, helping run CNY, that brand, uh, Peter Sutherland and, and his, his brand, I was just helping him run the back end of that and working at look as a printer. And was just kind of like, you know, behind the scenes doing stuff for a while. And like Peter was always super cool and like loved work brainstorming ideas and stuff like that. And I don't know, I guess just never told me that I was like stupid or fried. He was always just like super like, you know, we would just be like talking about stuff. Like he designed everything for CNY, but I, you know, we just have lots of brainstorm sessions and like, I don't know. It was just like, he was just encouraging. And like, if I had like an idea and like, you know, brought it to like Alex being like, yeah, do you think this is like, I'm, you know, I've never made more than, you know, I, I've always made small runs of stuff anyway. It's not cause I'm like afraid. I don't know. A lot of the inspirations are impulse and like, I don't want to like overdo it. <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah, like, yeah. Even if a lot of work goes into it. Cause like, it's not DTG, like everything like, was making it first, especially, you know, it's all like screen printed and there's a lot of work that goes into that, like hand pulling screens, like like the digital end burning screens. Like it's, it's not like the easiest thing in the world to do. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess like all the friends and people that I was working with were just really supportive and it's just like, you know, I was making stuff just here and there and then started getting ideas of doing other things. And then I was dying for, people a lot doing a lot of dye tie dye stuff and just like custom dyed stuff for brands and just like privately for people. And then, um, I mean, what d- made you get into tie dye in the first place? Cause I feel like that is at least me learning about you getting super into uh, tie dyeing clothes. It's that prob- kind of coincided with you being injured and yeah. know, out of commission for a long time. Yeah, like I guess that also kind of ties into what I was asking earlier. Like, where did you get your artistic inspiration from, particularly well, for the dye world? Well, tie dyes. Like, I got. I mean, I started. I mean, that's always been like a a thing that I've loved. That stuff. Like, my parents 
my parents were like, my dad has more tie dye shirts independently purchased and worn for a long period of time than anybody I know. That's not like a, you know, like, like a life or deadhead. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause he's not like a, he's not like a deadhead. He's just like, he's just, I mean, he grew up and he, w- he's, he went to Woodstock and stuff like that. Like he was definitely like a chiller in the day. It's like, he has tons, he has like ancient tie dye shirts and stuff like that. It, it wasn't like, you know, that's from like his life then. Like when I was growing up, he worked in, he was like, went to work every day, like wore, you know, a sport coat and stuff like that. So I'd see him like on the weekends and in the summer and stuff wearing like tie dyed stuff. But my sister is a big deadhead and a and huge fish fan. She's 10 years older than me. So when I was like getting into like high school and like, you know, I was in like middle school, high school, she was like out of high school. She's my sister is like a huge inspiration for me. She's incredibly intelligent. Um, she's like always, she's always continuing her education too. She's like, and she's a scientist. She's like, it's more like on the analytical like side now, for you know like environmental stuff uh she's like it's like so cool like she's yeah she was like a grateful dad and fish fan and like travel around and like (laughs) a van following them around and stuff like that like when she wasn't in school and like i don't know she's like always just been like super into like that sort of that that whole scene like she's just got such a good vibe and She's such a cool person and she can, she parties like responsibly, but also is like a functioning scientist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just cool. Like I was just like, you know, she smokes and like, isn't completely burnt out. You know what I mean? Like yeah, she's like, yeah. this is like something to aspire to. Like my right. sister's my motivation for a lot or just like, you know, not being like, you have to be like completely square and like not yeah, like it's not so black things. and white in life. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, exactly. And like I think she was like a good example for that growing up. And like yeah, like I said, like my dad was like super into like or still has like he's like you can't even imagine how happy he is that I ended up doing this stuff. Like he wants like one of everything. It's super funny. That's sick. Like if I make something and like I always have to make like an extra. 2XL. <laughs> Unless it's a one of one, but like all right, he gets Is it. it still falling? Yeah, it keeps falling. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, but like he he'll actually wear the stuff too. Like anytime he like I kick it with him, he's always even if he's wearing a sweater, he'll like pull it up and be like, Hey, I got this Flex one. On. It. Yeah, like he's like wearing like the look one last time I saw him, like just low key. I was like, that's so hard. <laughs> it's so fucking hip. But um sorry, I'm just dude, I'm just rambling. Um yeah, so it's like it's been like clear and present in my life, uh, for sure. And like, I really, before the last couple of years only had like a few tie dye shirts ever, but like I've had those ones forever. Like there's one I made like visiting Scott at like camp in Oregon, made one then I remember. And like, I had that one. I probably still have it somewhere. It just probably is just shredded. Mm -hmm. Um, before that I had some like, I had like some I've seen pictures of me like as like a kid wearing them but like whatever but like I don't know I remember yeah I don't know I never was super interested in like doing it full like I wasn't doing it a lot but I was working for this brand for CNY and uh we wanted to do like a big one-off project like 2017 like uh, just wanted to find someone to do like a hundred one-off dies that were like different than each other. And I was like, you know, kind of bridging gaps and like trying to help with production and stuff. And like, I hit up a couple people that like did like custom dye work, not tie dye, but like custom dye work, or, like indigo or like, you know, nice dye work, like, color color stuff and I was like pitched the job to a few people and they were like no 
like I'm not going to do like, it's just like so much work. Like I'll do a batch of a hundred of something, but like, I don't want to do like all, like all different, like different colors mm-hmm. and it's like whatever. It's like not an ideal job to, to pull off, but I wanted, I was like, yeah, we should have to do this. Like I'll, I'll do it. Like It's cool. I'll do it. I, I think I can do this. <laughs> and I got basically trusted with them. So I was like, I better nail it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, uh, kind of like the same as your Mark Jacobs in it. Yeah. Right? Gotta nail yeah. it. And like, I always, I knew what they were supposed to look like in my mind and like what we had talked about, like, which was like, whatever, like as long as they look like sick, like maybe I mean, we showed references to each other of what we thought would be cool. But like, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to pull that off. Anyway, the shirts went well. I had so much fun doing it. Um, pretty much right after that, he was like, let's do it with sweatshirts. And I was like, I'm down. And I just kept doing it. Like I kept working on stuff on the side of doing what I was doing for work. And, um, just got to the point where I was getting hit up more to do dye stuff than getting hit up to do anything else. Um, and the jobs got bigger. The quantities got bigger. Um, and finally I was just like, I think I need more time to do this. And so I just started only doing that and, um, was making my own stuff too, a little bit. I was printing some shirts and dyeing them and just, you know, doing whatever. But I didn't want to just start like a brand where I'm printing on tie dyed shirts. That's not like what I was, I wasn't trying to start a brand anyway. I was just making like artist shirts. Um, Cause like, yeah, I was already like kind of working for like a few brands that I love, mm-hmm. you know, so it says like, I wasn't going to just jump off the ship and start my own brand. That's like not what any of it was. I would just wanted to be free to do to work with a bunch of people and do different stuff. And dying was dying. Stuff was like a vehicle that I was, I was finding is it was something I could offer in like a wide in a wide capacity. Like I can dye stuff in like, there's a whole community of people that I know that have brands here and like, or make one off shirts or do this or that. And it's just like, it's the same way everyone needs a printer. Like people want dye work done and having someone in the community that does that stuff was like, I don't know. I just kind of kept getting hit up by everyone that was doing stuff and wanted tie dye stuff done. And, was just so psyched to work with all like everybody it was just like, wasn't saying no to like anything forever. <laughs> and it was just like, you know, working on that. But I was just also feeling, and I was taking up so much time that I was like, I want something else too. Like I need something else. I was painting a lot. I was drawing a lot. Um, I kind of came up with like a concept of wanting to like do a project with like, bunch of different artists and just kind of like do a big run not by season but like a drop with someone here with what they do them with what they do them with what they do like kind of adjust the sales to like what these people that I admire were doing like hey like try to think of a thoughtful concept to work with them and I did something as Joe Garvey asked me to do something with him after that and then I I made shirts with uh, artist Justin Adian. I wanted to do stuff with people that artists that didn't have brands too. That was like another thing. People that wouldn't necessarily make clothes, but like I wanted to make clothes that spoke to what they visually make. Mm-hmm. Justin Adian does like amazing uh, like sculptures and paintings and like very 3d uh super cool so i wanted to see what you know like do something like how would you go about making clothing you know what i mean like and did did like a project with him that was that was cool it was just like it was just it was really natural to work with him work with an art you know someone that wasn't thinking doesn't think in terms of like clothing all the time so it's like you know i did shirts with like uh, oh, no, then I, I, I talked to, uh, Tony Tafura. uh, I, such as he's so sick. He, uh, he makes a lot of t-shirts like hand-drawn shirts and like bleach, bleach 
uh, does bleach stuff on shirts and he's multidisciplined. He's also a photographer. He also makes psychotic paintings. Like serious, he's, he's sick, but I always liked his, his style and, um, like what he did, I bought numerous shirts from him. I'd always see him at like the eight ball book fairs and, at uh, like the New York art book fair and stuff like that. Like I always go to his table and like buy whatever shirt he had up. It'd be mm-hmm. a screen printed shirt generally or like, and then he was like printing them and coloring them all in different and stuff. And I was like, this is cool. Like there's lots of people that do that stuff. Like that's not like a new concept. People have been doing that forever. Um, but I just kind of was like, this is cool. Like I appreciate screen printing. I appreciate like, embroidery I appreciate all these processes but I wanted to do something that was like I was doing was very heavily doing process work with just doing dye stuff for people that I wanted to like do something at like immediate like you know what I mean like have just do something like now I want this idea now I want to do it now so like Tony and I started talking and it was just like yo how about I dye a shirt and he paints just it. give it to you blind. You just like open it up and just like react. Like, what do you see in this composition? It's like, you could either be like reading, looking at a sky and like looking at the shit in the clouds, trying to pull stuff out of the dye, or does it remind you of something like, Oh, like, you know what I mean? Like whatever you see or feel when you look at this go. And that's kind of how we started like it was very natural, like trying to recall stuff is like funny now, but like, it was just very natural. It was just like stream of consciousness. Like I die this, give it to you. You look at it. Boom. And then we'd switch it up. He'd draw something and be like, die around this. Or like, mm-hmm. What's this make you feel like as far as communicating with color and stuff. And I think we just kind of like started feeding off each other and it was good. We started making some crazy stuff. And that it was, we were going to make 20 shirts. That was like the whole thing. We were going to do 20, like one of one offs. So beginning of 2018. And yeah, we were just going to do like 20 shirts or something like that. And then we ended up working together for like a year and a half and (laughs) making thousands and thousands and thousands of different things like shirts, uh, flight suits, paintings, shoes, bags, sculptures. Dude, we just like made so, you know what I mean? Like we just started working together. I ended up getting a studio together and it was just like, we weren't trying to start a brand either. We were just like working on a project and it just was never done. You know what I mean? Like we were just like, I'm still feeling like an insane amount of like go from this. And so it was just like, let's just do this until we don't want to do it anymore till we're out of ideas. We hate each other, something, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like not, that didn't, ha- like it just kind of like, it's very organic. It dude, sounds yeah. Like. Yeah. We work. we just like, we worked, made a lot of work together over the last couple of years, but like, we're still doing our own separate stuff. Then when we had time, like I was still doing shirts with other people or dying stuff for people for both for income and just out because I, you know, was like trying to hold anyone down that I had time for, you know, and he was doing illustration work for people and does graphics for brands and stuff too. So it's like, there's never any like conflict of interest. Like we were just like hyped. If he's doing something like I'm going to post about it, like, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but people liked, I think what the clothing stuff that we were doing a lot. And I think that, did a lot i think us not having a focus or a goal just like working helped a lot too because neither one of us are like you know i want to be the dude like you know what i mean so i think like the fact that we were just buckled down working for so long was like the only way people took notice because we were just making stuff and mm-hmm. it was dude it's, it's sick like you don't get that many creative rhythms with people over life i feel like like but I've, you know, like musically I've had it, I've gotten it with someone before, like jamming with them where it's like you start like communicating, you know what I mean? Like you can connect with someone on a level where you don't even need to like go over stuff. You're just thinking not even the same thing, but like 
co- you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. just like it's working or communicating just by energy. Mm-hmm. Um, and like we definitely we definitely hit that for a long time, and it's awesome. Uh, but that kind of like shaped a little bit what we were both doing independently and together. That project, we both started working with like. I mean, we were both working with different people anyway, but like that's when we started getting like uh, approach to do like bigger things or like corporate stuff. Or, you know what I mean? Like the the projects got bigger, whatever. Like the commission yeah. stuff got bigger, and it was cool that like we were able to do it all together. I don't know. Yes, yeah, it's, it's cool. Definitely like. Yeah, so, and now, like, him and I are still, we still have so much stuff made that, like, we just never, it just got too much. Like, we just never posted a lot of the stuff. Like, we have so much stuff still. Um, But, like, right when this stuff started happening, like, with, like, the the coronavirus and stuff, like, we're already just burnt out from last, from a little bit burnt out from, like, the amount of stuff that we had just finished doing last year. Um, Yeah, I believe it. And we're like, yeah, let's just take January a little bit, take it slow. Little did you know. A little did we know, yeah. I mean, there was a few things that happened. Like, at the beginning of the year, I was, like, so exhausted, too. Like, just not taking care of myself good and, like, had, like, a, like, fainted walking down the sidewalk in the middle of the daytime. Damn. (laughs) Like, smashed my face on the ground. Fuck. Yeah. Let me ask you, um... When you felt that you were burnt out, was it just like one day it almost kind of clicked for you or was it a oh, gradual? No. Oh, it was super gradual. Okay. Yeah, it just felt like felt like the backpack was getting heavier every day. Um, but I mean there's definitely things that I could could have done differently to curve that or to like make it not so you know. I just didn't want to like it's the same thing I was saying before, is like, you know, you can get into a flow and you're working and you're like working like into something you don't want to even stop to eat like i'll hold you forget to breathe dude i'll hold a pee for way too long you know what i mean like yeah yeah just get so focused yeah forget to breathe whatever but like genuinely like you you your uh breathing rhythm is completely off yeah and it's almost like you probably don't notice you're not getting good oxygen in your brain exactly yeah yeah yeah. it's almost like you're hyperventilating without a bag over your head that's so bad um, um, no, skipping I meals isn't good either. Like, of course, of course, of course, it's terrible. Yeah, skipping meals, drinking water. If you don't have um, to skip a meal, skipping one is like wild. Yeah. No, I mean, but yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, I felt it creeping on, but like fought it in different ways and made. I was committed to a lot of stuff. I was still, I was like playing a lot, still playing music and stuff last year a bit too. So it was just like there was just so much going on, um, and. I just wanted to do everything, dude. I want to do everything super good. Like do it's everything all you, under it's the all, sun, yeah. It's all you want to do. Yeah. It's like all anyone wants to do. Like P- Particularly here, though. A place like New York City, you're like, well, if I'm not doing something, then yeah. what am I going to talk to about my friends? Or like, fuck, I, how, I, I remember being poor, so I don't want to ever be poor again. So like, I can never say no to a gig. Like, I get that. Five, but I guess the reason I ask about the, the... Five free minutes in New York is like unheard of. Dude, it's so fucking nice. Yeah. When I get that, I mean, like, we all have that right now. We have, like, five fucking, probably be, like, five months-ish of it. But, um, yeah, I guess I just asked because, for me, it was, like, this time last year where I agreed to have one of the homies come through after I got off work to come through to the studio to shoot some headshots. And then we took some photos and I was kind of feeling uninspired and I'm like, oh, like the angles and the lighting's not working. And then I'm smoking a cigarette and it's almost like my body just like instantly, I just felt it just go into like a limp mode. And I was like, yo, we need to cut tonight short. And like, I swear ever since then, I'm just like, I need to start limiting myself to like how many things I do per day. Like I only have so much bandwidth. Listen to your body. Dude, big time. (laughs) I mean, like at the very least, a good start would be to focus on your breathing and drink a lot of water. It sounds Boom. so fucking dude, dumb, dude, but it's I, so it's smart. not. That's what happened. That's that was the main reason I like dude, I like lost consciousness walking down the street cuz I was like super hungry, a little stressed out, dehydrated, super dehydrated. 
and like had just picked up takeout, was like walking down the street with it, it got to like a stop, a red light, and was like, boom. Like, just like that. Yeah. If Ronnie wasn't with me to like grab the back of my jacket, I would have like, I hit my face hard anyway, but she like grabbed me when I was, I was like falling down and like kept me from like fully scorpion, like Fuck. fully like doing a scorpion. In the yeah. Street yeah. And, like, I probably would have like lost more marbles. You know what I mean? Like she saved my life for sure. Um, but that was that, that was like a couple of days after new year's and I've just kept it at a slower pace since the beginning of this year. Obviously didn't foresee this happening. Yeah. But um, I, I don't know. I'm okay with, with this pace right now. <laughs> yeah. And you know, in, in a way like work still, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. And now you're moving to LA. That's where they love to chill. Yeah, right. They love to keep an even I, keel. Uh, kinda. I want to like, I want to talk shit on myself, even man. <laughs> well, for moving on there. I mean, we're, it was, it wasn't. It's not a, new, it's not an impromptu plan. It's something like we've been. It's been in the works for. She's for from out there, no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I have, sense. I have work out there. I have. There's friends out there. Like I'm. It's fine. I'm not gonna not do stuff here either. You know, it's not. It's not some. It's not crazy. Yeah. But. I remember being out there a couple of years ago and uh, I remember I was like, I had to be like 27 or something. I was like, I was like, yeah, I was like a little younger, but just fully like, I fucking love living here. Like, you know, I, in I, LA? No, here, here. Oh, in New York. Yeah. Yeah. I was just like way about it. And I was out there interviewing for a job too. And, I just remember being like, I remember I called like two of my friends that were out there. I was there for like five days. I called like two of my friends out there, like two different nights. I was like, yo, what are you doing, man? Like 6 PM, you know, 7 PM. What are you doing? What are you, what are you up to? Like, Oh, we're just kicking it. We're not, you know, we're not doing much. Like we're just going to like super low key. Like da, 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 da. Oh, I don't want to drive there. It's like a 20 minute drive or like, you know what I mean? And I was just like, Yo, what is it with everybody here? I was like, dude, I can't wait to get back to New York. I got back. I'm like, man, like, like, yeah, everyone's just doing stuff all day. You're like a 20 minute drive. I'm taking a 40 minute train ride to go to something I don't even want to go to right now just to be there, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's so true. Like swatting people away on the, you know, like, I don't know. It was just like not in that headspace, like, I was just like, dude, I don't have, I'm not there. I'm, I haven't earned the right to chill. I just didn't, it was like, I haven't earned the right to chill that hard. Like, yes, but now I didn't, I, now I look at, but it's weird. Cause like now you fast forward like five years later or whatever. Um, uh, I'm not saying I like am a wise man by any means, but I've gained wisdom in five years just by being a human being existing for five more years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and doing, making mistakes and learning, but, um, yeah, it's not even like earning the right to chill. It's just like what I do at this point is not hindered by me being calm and stationary. Like what I, I've, I've made it. So what I do is way more self it's self work. Like I work by essentially by myself. Um, the only like movement I have is like client work and like, using like a public laundry mat to do washing sometimes <laughs> if it's a bigger batch. Uh, but like, yeah, take that out of it. If I had like a wash, like a wa like a washing system and like a little space, I'd be fine. I don't need, I don't need to be cruising around. And at this point, like I'm happy, like chilling and mm -hmm. just being outside. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I just, it's just, life's just kind of got in there and like, that doesn't mean I couldn't do it here. Like I just get a nicer apartment here with like a back. I mean, there's apartments that you can have backyards here. There's tons of stuff. Like you could do it here too, but it's just like, yeah, that was our plan to, to go out there at the, at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. But our lease on the apartment, everything's like up now, go now. 
Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you're not even the only uh, person though, because um, Noah, Noah McManus, mm-hmm. Skate John, mm-hmm. him and his wife just moved up to East Hampton. Because like, That's awesome. yeah, what, in like, Long Island. No, East Hampton, uh, up in Mass. Mass. Yeah, we'll yeah, Because yeah. that's also in, like, the Hamptons. Right, right, right. That's where I, I used to work at the gallery out there. East Hampton. Oh, that's right, right. Yeah, the ticks. <laughs> ticks, yeah. Um, they got ticks. But, yeah, he moved to, to Western Mass, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Which was, like, a kind of a plan, I think, all along for them. They lived in SF for a long time, got married out there. Um, and then they wanted to move to the East Coast just to be closer to family, but they wanted to try New York. And, you know, like, long story short, family shit and uh, the corona situation, they just inevitably were up there for a long time anyways, and they were like, fuck it, let's just, let's we'll start looking for an apartment, and, like, real quick, they found one, they got one great location. I thought about it when we were just up there. Yeah, I mean, it's not, especially what you were just saying, how, like, you're, you're very self-sustaining, you know, self-sufficient when it comes to your work. Like, you kind of could make it pretty much anywhere. I like to be around. Right. But that's the thing. Like I'm, by nature, I do like being alone. I do, I mean, I don't, I don't I'm not alone. I'm not like, oh, I'm a loner. I do, I like alone time. I yeah, like, like, you appreciate it. I'm not scared to be in a room by myself. You know what I mean? Alone mm-hmm. with my thoughts. Like, I kind of need it a little bit. Uh, but I am a social creature, and I do, like, I, just, I love energy. I love, like, being around people. Like, I couldn't live too remotely yet. Yeah, of course, of we'll course. We'll get there. We'll get there, hopefully. Yeah. I'm feeling, like, a little bit more. It's not even like I'm withdrawing. I just feel, like, more comfortable with uh, less static, I guess. Yeah. And I don't hate it here, either. It's not It's not that. I'm not. It's not that I hate New York now. It's not that I like it less. And it's not that I'm afraid of getting sick being here, either. It's just, like it's just been something that we've been talking about and yeah. Yeah. I mean, once again, back to what we were talking about when we first started a conversation, it's kind of like, uh, there's a lot of silver linings to the situation. And one of them happens to be that things like this, like your transition out West, Noah moving up to mass, it's kind of things that were already pre-planned, but are just being expedited. Yeah. Or like the, the, the shitty weak relationships that are about to be over because people in, in quarantine can't stand each other. Yeah. They, they find the out they, they actually don't want to date each other. You know, it's like same thing. It's like things are just being expedited. Like, the uh, earth is healing itself. The earth is healing. Dude, it, it deserves to be healed, man. Yeah. We've been so bad to it. No, I'm just throwing that in. We've just been to so fuck bad around. To it. Oh, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna take you down a serious road with it. But we've been so shitty to the earth. We have. Um, and now look what's happening. Yeah. Now um, another white male is making a podcast. Uh, there's enough Jesus. podcasts. There's probably enough podcasts. This no, I don't, I don't. Toxic masculinity. God damn it. I don't think so. This there's there's worse. There's worse podcasts. Thank you. I'm not the worst. No. I've watched I've watched most of them, I think. Oh, sick. Thank you. I um, particularly liked the one with Sean Sawicki. Huge fan. Of course. Also, one of the... F- we were a week ago when we started talking and I started just going in all sorts of stupid directions. I think I threw in a nugget of saying that someone was like one of the first people that I remember being like, oh, that dude's good at skating. A different time, but also in a very young age, I saw Sean Sawicki skating somewhere and was like, okay, that guy's really, really good. And But he says, yeah. not just one thing about what he's doing. Like, the whole thing is sick. Like, yeah. I don't know. He looked cool, which was like, he was friends with like guy too, mm-hmm. huh? It all makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Guy took him under his wing, also. Dude, he just looked sick. Yeah, is when he had like big hair too. Remember? Yeah. Did you ever know him? Like back? Oh, in of the course. Day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, when I first yeah. met him, you, and I totally you, thought that he had a perm. Right. No, no. He's just got curly <laughs> hair. Uh, but dude, like the tricks that that dude was like doing, and like the way he was doing them was just like insane switch heel flip tail slide you know what i mean stuff yeah. that you're just like oh he's like good good but yeah he just had like 
There's just something so effortless and like he's so cool to be around. Like this yep. dude Sawicki is sick. So having him have an episode on here was like great. Yeah. Great pull. And he's dude, the artwork that guy's been making for like yep. years now is sick. He's so diligent. I feel like he like makes I don't know. I don't talk to him very I don't really like we're not super I hold him up here though. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I'm like yeah. that dude's sick. Uh it seems like he's very disciplined and makes like does stuff every day. Yeah. And dude, respect a good work ethic. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, exactly. Like you, you, you I, I appreciate like not just artists, but like anyone that like works at something every day. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. There's something about like this old, old school workmanship. It's like, I don't know. I'm not an illustrator. I've never been like an illustrator. I doodle, I draw up concepts and then try to figure out how to, either paint it or have someone else render it or something like, but I've always appreciated that. Like, you know, illustrators and stuff that like wake up and do like an exercise every morning. You know what I mean? Like draw the same, I draw the same landscape or, or, you know, I, you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like they're like mastering their craft. Sure. Yeah. Just keeping, keeping the tools sharp. I just think that's, I think that's like such a good quality. And that doesn't have to be like creative necessarily either, but right. someone that works towards something like every day. Like, I don't know. Uh, everyone, yeah, everyone should be working at being better, better versions of themselves every day, you know? like. But that takes work, and a lot of people don't want to put any work into it. Period, yeah, so. they want the perk without the work. Right. I get that. Who doesn't? <laughs> I enjoy the process. Of I enjoy personally. the process too, but like there's some things that like, I don't know if you have groceries in your fridge and you order seamless sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, but that's not necessarily work. That's no, you can equate it, but it's also like, I don't feel like thinking of something to cook out of what I have and then doing the dishes after, like it could be a time thing. It could be, you just don't feel like eating anything you have, but like, I don't know. Like there's, if you put it down to like a completely utilitarian and like you boil it down, it's like, I could be eating what I have here. I don't know. It's like, I don't know. No, maybe it's a little bit of a stretch. It's a little bit of a stretch, but I think I know where you're going. Same kind of thinking, though. Yeah, I want, I want something because it's like, I, I think the layer of it that that connects is like, it's going to take me forty five minutes to cook this, but getting this food delivered is going to take the same amount of time. Yeah, but I don't have to work. Well, but I don't consider that work. Like, especially cooking, I think is is so enjoyable. Uh, To me, that's the difference. Yeah, I, I I don't I don't hate it, but I'm not I'm not great. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely not great either. Yeah. But I guess it also depends on your your level of discipline too. Like, say if you're like really trying to save money, sure, you're not ordering out. Yeah, yeah, and if you do, then you're like really kicking yourself. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> but yeah. whatever. I mean, sometimes you just say fuck it. I go back and forth. I mean, I've eaten the most home cooked meals in the last like two and a half months than I have in like the last 10 years. And I'm stoked on that. Yeah, me too. And I'm learning and I'm learning to love it. I'm learning to like, my thing is, is like what I'll do the dishes. I don't care. I'm, I don't mind doing dishes. I washed dishes for $8 an hour when I was a kid. Or maybe like, I don't know how I forget now, but like, yeah, I, I used to wash. I don't mind doing that stuff. Like yeah. I don't mind doing like tedious stuff like dishes and stuff like that. I've just never like enjoyed or had the patience to like cook. Really, yeah, I feel you. I can I, keep myself alive, but like not like cooking. I I'm never looking at a cookbook. I've never opened a cookbook and been like, hmm, ooh, yeah, and then go to the grocery store and get like the list. Like, I've tried to. That's awesome. And it's like I've gotten pretty good results, but that's when it starts to feel almost like a job rather than just like, oh, I'll see what I can whip up. Because yeah. then it makes me feel crafty. Like, I made my own personal I wanted this. Uh, I figured concoction. out how to make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. That's awesome. That's yeah. Creating something and appreciating it more. Yeah, yeah. But um, but that's rare also. Because the past, the past two months, I've eaten so much rice and beans. I'll add some shit into the rice and beans. Like, Dude, I'll well, steam some veggies because I'm trying to keep I mean, myself that's healthy. A, but that's a constant, though. Like, right? Th- that shit will keep you alive. Yeah, you yeah. Just introduce other things into the mix. For try sure. To, try to get something green in there. 
like pretty frequently and then yeah. like you're good I'm, I'm back to like 2011 numbers when i first moved to new york me dave nelson and dave noonan we the 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 food town the super food town right next to our house at one point i don't know why the fuck this happened maybe it was like an error or maybe the farm that they got the kale from in waitley mass they like grew too much kale the shit was 39 cents a pound like at one point the b- whole bottom like shelf or two of our fridge is just full of kale we used to put kale and like eat it with eggs in the morning yeah if it was raining or snowing outside we like we couldn't go outside for food or didn't have money for it rice kale and like pinto beans and whatever like toppings and shit but yeah it's just like keep you, you know, alive keep it simple keep, keep it, it alive healthy. and it's yeah it's healthy better than eating like a bunch of cold cuts and yeah i mean shit like that I'm sure if I had a girlfriend, we'd be cooking some way more beast meals. But for now, it's honestly at the same time kind uh, of a nice stress reliever where I'm like... We do a lot of rice and beans too, man. Just like like you said, introduce some other things into the mix. Fair, fair. But I feel like that's not for every girl because some, no. some girls would be like, you know, the subconscious, like having to try to keep up with her girlfriends on Instagram and like, well, she's reading Bon Appetit, so I have to also. Uh, like Chrissy Teigen, blah, 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 cook this. and like, I have to... I would do my friend. You know what I mean? Like social. Yeah. Yeah. That bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Um, fuck. So LA. We're, bo- we're both just like her and I are both just like oblivious, not oblivious, but like purposely oblivious to like a lot of stuff. I yeah. Not like. giving a fuck. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I think that's healthy, especially right now. Not hating on it, but like, yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was just not to the point where it's like not even like trying to put on an act like I don't care what anyone's doing. Like yeah. as long as they're happy and they're not doing something like horrible, then like sick, keep doing it. Like Yeah. Keep, I think I'm also just trying to be way more focused on like what am I doing? Yeah. Like am I doing good by myself, by by yeah, people, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Do the best you can. Like, yeah, without being self centered about it or like, you know, being fully like narcissistic. It's like, yeah, you got to keep yourself at number one being like, how can I, I like, yeah. Another thing that I like is like, how can I be of use? Mm -hmm. And I've been like trying to not be on Instagram and stuff too much lately and like trying to put out too much stuff like on a whim right now because I just like. I feel like it's more useful for me to not be or something like that in a way. Like, yeah, I think that I, I don't know. Yeah. Just trying to stay off stuff a little bit. And yeah. Um, the news, the news is crazy. Bad I'm, place. I, I, I glance, but I like, I'm not spending an hour of the day reading through news stories and looking at different news sources right now, trying to like make sense of everything that's happening with everything, like every horrible thing ever. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's yeah, it's not cause I don't, like, I don't give a shit what's happening. Like, I don't mean to say it sound come off like that. It's just like, Oh no, you're not. You, you're coming off as someone it, that's like level headed it, and it'll kill you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, It'll kill you if you read into stuff and like, cause like, I don't know. I, I try to not have form an opinion until it seems, I don't know. I try to like, I'm not going, I'm not, I don't read stuff. Try, try not to like read everything from like a, like write it right off the credibility of something immediately just cause of who wrote it. Like I want to, I ideally I'd like to read 10 different people's take on something mm-hmm. to like, and not, not just to be like, this one's wrong, this one's wrong, but like, you know how a telephone works with everything? <laughs> like, yeah. you kind of like, I got to cut the, you got to like boil it down a little bit and figure yep. out what the useful information that's not, you know, what the actual useful information is. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you have to read like a few different outlets to like get there. But like, yeah, the overtures of everything is just like very doomsday and a lot of people blame it you know what i mean like dude it's so crazy it's not good to like focus on that stuff all the time. yeah but you also don't want to like have your head in the sand yeah completely either. the only news source i've really been going to is the gotham is because they have a daily tracker of st- statistics 
in New York City, in New York State, yeah. um, based on like you know new tests, uh, new cases, um, death rates, all that, <laughs> and that's like the only place I would suggest going to because like the numbers don't lie. And what you're hearing in the news is often based off of the numbers. So it's like, if you want, you, if you don't trust politicians, if you don't trust the news organizations that are providing the news to you, this is your opportunity to read the unprocessed facts, unprocessed numbers and make an assumption yourself. You know what I'm saying? And it's very, it's pretty simple to read a graph, a chart that's showing you like essentially the, the strategy has been put in place to like flatten the curve. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And cause it's, I feel like a lot of people are just, they're, they're uninformed. It's not even misinformation. It's uh, the lack of information too, for some people, people that don't look into any type of news outlet. And it's like you said, it's literally just a game of telephone but it could literally be coming from like one neighbor to a grandma to another neighbor. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you got to look at like the statistics. You got to look at the news outlets, but you also got to look at fringe shit and you got to look at conspiracy theorists and stuff too. Cause that stuff's fr- not always completely unfounded. Yeah. So you add like those elements in it, but that's when you can get tripped up too, because you're like, nobody's telling the truth and none of these numbers right. are real. Everything's doctored. What about the, you know what I mean? Yeah. But so I think, yeah, maybe that's my problem too, is I read so much different stuff when I do read it. Cause I just like, don't want to take a side of anything, but then I'm just like, I don't even know what to do. Anymore. No, but that's smart to do. I just, I would definitely like, you but can't, for example, you can't, you can't count YouTube as a news source or a news outlet. No. And you shouldn't write a paper off of Wikipedia. Yeah. Necessarily. But like a lot of people these days, they don't know the difference. No, no. You know, no, it's, it's fucking reference. scary. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's like a quote from The Office. It's like, it's obviously satire, but like Michael Scott, it's like, I love Wikipedia. Anybody can get on there. Anyone in the world could get on there and write whatever you, they want. So you know you're getting the best information. Right. <laughs> it's like, that's like, that's the internet. It's so fried. Yeah. But like, I mean, like, yeah. yeah. Shout out to The Office. Dude. <laughs> best show. Dude. Um, so where in Los Angeles are you moving to? Uh, I don't even know yet, man. It's up in the air. We're looking at some spots. Yeah. Damn. So no spot yet. Are you going to like stay with her parents? Yeah. We're going to, we're going to land in, in at her spot and I have some work that we're going to crack off with like right away. But I see. Um, yeah, they, like they're outside of LA, like okay. inland a little bit and like, oh, okay. Like nice. Nice zone. Like a little Pasadena more, or A little more deserty. Or? No, inland, like uh, around like Riverside. It's okay. like 40 minutes, like, yeah, it's nice. Um, not by the water, but like I like I like where, where she's from up there. It's cool. But we, I mean, I'll, we'll probably be there for like a week. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Um, I just am, I'm just hitting the ground running, working. So, and we have a car and stuff, so I'm just going to like drive and. Uh, we're going out like the beginning of the month, so we're gonna, you know, I'll either sublet something, you know, I mean, your family rules, so we might just they have a bunch of property, so we might stay there for the month or might sublet something before, but like, I'm, we're not trying to rush it because, like, we want to like find where we're gonna live for the next like few years, mm-hmm. and try to move in by like July, and Look- keeping it, keeping it pretty mellow. Like, I don't want to live in downtown LA. Oh, no, no. <laughs> like, necessarily. I mean, first off, if you're not going to get I a will, million tickets, parking tickets, you'll definitely get your shit broken into. Yeah, I mean, we're not we're not driving a Maserati. <laughs> but still. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're going to, I mean, the, the whole thing is that we want, like, a little bit more. Yeah, I've been living in a tiny apartment in Bushwick for eight years. I, I'm not saying like, Oh, I want, I want, I'm going out California way to stretch out. It's not like yeah. that neither, but it's almost little space to breathe a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Um, look up in, um, I want to say Culver city, but I feel like Culver city is like Bushwick 10 years ago where prices just shot way the fuck up. Yeah. Or look in Eagle rock. Yeah. I mean, that's beautiful too. That's like usually where, go stay when we're 
when we're out there. Um, but like, dude, I'm, I don't, I mean, I'm down for, I'm down for what makes sense. Like I'm, I'm not opposed to like anywhere really. I don't really want to live in. Yeah. I don't really want to live in like, I don't know. West Hollywood. Yeah. But I'm just like, also like if it was like a cool spot, like the part, if it was like a good place and like we could afford it. No, of course. That would definitely make life easy. So I'm like, I'm no, I'm not, I'm not going to say no to anything. Like mm-hmm. Even like North Holly, like I don't care. Like I live. Yeah, if it makes sense, it makes sense. If it makes sense. Like families like this far away. You know, we got friends everywhere. There, Like got friends that live yeah, all over the place. Like if I had, if I had a bigger bankroll, we'd go buy a house in Ventura and like, you know what I mean? Like just be in nature, be, you know, that far away, but we'll see. But it's also like, we have, the same allure to buying a house upstate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To happen, like, a, some of my friends, like, started doing well and, like, or wanted to get out, and, like, we're moving upstate. It's the same thing. It's like, but, like, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. I've been, I grew up on the East Coast. Like, I'm not afraid of it being cold half of the year. <laughs> but I actually, like, yeah, I don't know. We're just mobbing it. Mobbing it. Actually, there's something like very comforting in that. Like, it's been a long, long time since I made like a big faith move without knowing all the details of what's going on. So jumping in with both feet. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, it's like, I feel like I should, like, some part of my brain's like, oh, you should probably be worried about that sort of stuff, dude. But then, like, another part of me is like, hey, we'll figure you know, it out. That's, that's just proof right there. Like, you've clearly you've lived enough and been through enough bullshit in your life where you're like, yeah, I'm moving. Like I'll figure it out. Things have always been worse and I've always also been better. Yeah. (laughs) Like it's going to be both ways again. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Uh, it's not like an expectation, you know, like, like don't expect anything. So you're just stoked with whatever. It's not even like that. It's just like at this point, there's so much stuff to stress over and like, so many things and so much unknowing that like I'm not going to waste my time or energy or anybody else is complaining about. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't fully have a plan. It's like, what is, what the fuck is life right now anyway? <laughs> With what's <laughs> yeah. going on? Like, what am I going to complain that like, dude, I don't, everything's fine. I'm alive. I'm healthy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, like so long as you, everyone in my, that. no one in my family has, gotten like really sick from it um or gone crazy um you know like my uh, most of my friends are doing as well as they possibly can be doing like trying to just keep in touch with everybody and just be like you know dude like that's like that goes way further right now check in with your friends be like yo how are you doing guarantee you they probably have time to, to even if they don't text you back right now because they're like binge watching something or like busy or don't feel like talking like they or got cooking time. they got or cooking they got time to hit you back like, yeah it's like yeah i think everyone's like stoked in contact right now yeah yeah i think so long as people focus on so long as people focus on uh, counting their blessings versus what they're missing out on right now it's like You'll be good. That mentality, that PMA will carry you a long way. I'm so like grateful for everything in my life. Like I don't have, you know what I mean? Like I said, I definitely don't have like a lot of money and like nice, you know, whatever. But I'm so happy. Like I don't even, you know, like I can't see the future, but like I know that kind of, I know like, the energy I want to bring to it. And I know that I want to be useful and I know that I want to be helpful and I want to be able to share what I've learned thus far in life and while continuing to still learn, um, and hopefully make some cool stuff. If not, then like help make, I don't know, like, you know what I mean? Like I just want to be useful to some capacity and I don't know. I want to help just, I don't know if kids, kids these days are like, 
kids these days. I don't know. It's weird. Like we're old now, dude. You're like not like old, but I know. I don't know. It's different now for kids than it was when we were kids. Like I used to throw rocks at my friends when, after. You know what I mean? Like we didn't like it. Did wasn't much to do growing up in the sticks in like the early nineties, right? Uh, and like kids are very like on their phones and doing digital stuff, and that's awesome. But like kids that still want to like learn stuff, I just want to like figure out how to be useful as like a resource for for the youth now. Like definitely not like giving advice on what to do with, you know, managing themselves. I don't know. Like there's like just basically like you have wisdom to share. Yeah, I have wisdom to share, but not like in like a scholastic or like school platform. But like as far as like trusting yourself that you you know if you have the drive to do something and like don't mind blowing it and like messing up then like it's all good like skateboarding not everyone has the luxury of you know growing up skateboarding and knowing how to like slam on the ground and get up and try the same thing again and that really instills something in your head that like you know what I mean trying the same trick for four hours and like not getting it and then coming out the next day and like getting it that instills some sort of like patience and like belief in yourself so it's like, I feel like a lot of people don't have the luxury of that. And like, I mean, skating saved my life at a time. Like I got a skateboard, like right at like a traumatic time in my childhood. And that was my escape from thinking about stuff and ended up forging relationships and brought me everything that I can do that I'm doing right now. I can trace back to like skateboarding in some way. Either like f- first artwork I thought was accessible. It was like, board graphics, t-shirts, you know, or like album covers, like shit that I could feel. Cause like walking into a gallery wasn't like a thing. Like I felt like was normal to do when I was a kid and growing up in Western Mass, there aren't any really <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, and like, I remember like the ones we'd go into, they're like kids walking in with their skateboards. Like I don't care if you're curious, get out of here. So like, I don't know, like if, skating was like the accessible thing to me that made everything seem possible, but not everyone has, I don't know. I feel like also someone just telling you that you can do something or to trust yourself is can go pretty far too. like show, do stuff with kids. Like I started doing like workshops and stuff last year, like dye stuff and, um, that kind of hectic and I don't fully know what I'm doing. And I'm also not a terrific public speaker to a room full of people, but there's something that feels really good about being able to like do that and see people get stoked and like realize that they might be able to do something that they didn't know how to do before. Or, Oh, maybe I can do this. Isn't that hard? Or like, you know what I mean? Like realizing that you have the patience to do something. I don't know. I think that's, that's, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah, I think everyone's gonna need some serious self belief in the in the next in the next I mean forever, but like next little bit of time I think will be important for people to like have some, some self confidence and also like care about each other. Like want to teach and inform people. Like, I don't know. It's it's a weird time, man. It's a weird time that we're in. Well, that was all beautiful. I think I'll just end the episode there. I think I'm also about to run out of Tape. card space in yeah. about three minutes. So yeah, I'm just happy to I'm happy we're even able to like do this right now. We're not on like, you know, hopefully that means things are getting better. Oh, absolutely. I didn't wear this the whole time. <laughs> but yeah, I was actually thought about that. I was like, I wonder if we're wearing masks this whole interview. It's like, no. Nah. Not happening. I trust myself Dude, that I've been responsible enough and we're six have, feet apart anyway. Well, there's that, but also we're both responsible adults. Even though I said in the beginning of this that I don't feel like an adult yet, I feel like I'm 19. Yeah. I, I was also told throughout my life I always acted more mature than. You're not dumb and you have a survival instinct. Exactly. And you live here. So you kind of, I don't know. I will, 
back when I, when I used to drink and stuff, like I'd walk down the street <laughs> at the end of the night from the bar uh, a little bit more freely in different places than I'm going to make sure I'm standing up straight. You know what I mean? Like you have a survival instinct. Like yeah. We're, we're gonna, smart, man. We'll make it. We'll make it. There's going to be, tomorrow's going to be brighter. Yeah. Absolutely. But, right, yeah. Well, thanks for stopping by, especially the fact that while you're moving. Yeah. Walked here. Oh, you're about to get a ride home. That's for sure. For, 40 minute walk. Yeah, but like, dude, I appreciate. It. I I like I I like walking and like, could have ridden a bike over here. There's I'm gonna give you a ride home. Cool. cool. All right, thanks, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.